Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems like it. Okay. Uh, been doing a little bit more work on the next iteration of the Omni Smelter. Uh, doing away with the Sushi Belt. Using nothing but speed modules in the beacons. And obviously we've trimmed away some of the actual furnaces themselves. Um, but it still produces enough that we just barely have enough room for uh, the output on belts. So 161 is just 19 short of fully saturating four blue belts. Um, as you can see, the balanced loaders are struggling to keep up as it is. I actually went and uh, removed the enable disable condition on four of these inserters. Um, I think that just barely made the difference. That these inserters were able to keep up with the product. So, uh, iron, copper, these are the products that need four belts, um, glass and stone brick need a little bit less, and steel will never need more than one belt, and luckily it's just as well because We've moved the, um, we've moved the rail up a little bit here to make room. That's why the, um, that's why we've got these diagonal locomotives, very slightly diagonal cargo wagons, um, because that's just where I was able to connect some rail up to the roundabout for the exit. So it didn't leave a whole lot of room for if there was going to be a station here and here. A AM sock. Excuse me while I get something out of my throat here. Episode 50 already? Yeah. It's, uh... Space... There's a lot to do in space exploration, but also I could have done it a bit quicker, I think. Uh, I am Suck and Horizon Effect. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So, all that's left to do with this... Um, I, I've been testing the throughput. I had to tweak a few things with, um, with the belts coming into the four lanes of, uh, iron plate and copper plate. It was actually, because it's six to four, we don't need a perfect balancer because of the, uh, balanced loaders, but, um... I think it is a perfect balance, but regardless, the main thing is to ensure there's enough throughput. Uh, stone brick, we've actually got a three to two um, balancer here, same for glass. And steel, obviously, isn't much of a problem. I just want to remind myself of the rate, how quickly we're going to make glass here. Uh, 80 per second is less than two blue belts. A mucky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Cassandra Asmalith. Good to see you again as well. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. Um, but yeah, I think... I think this is the design. And... Oh, this is full. Um, all I've got left to do actually building this thing 
is the circuitry, um, including the LTN circuitry, which obviously I've done that before. It's not that interesting anymore. I, maybe I could come up with something new with the logic. We've certainly got plenty of room for combinators uh, left over. But the point of this redesign wasn't so much the logic of when we smelt what, as it is we found a design where uh, we've got uh, three chests for input. This one is the uh, this one is the chest, the overflow chest for the crafting combinator. Each chest is shared between two resources, or at least two resources for the most part over here. Um, iron plate and stone goes in here. Half a chest each. Iron and copper over here. We do this just with uh, set filters blacklist and setting a negative for uh, how many extra items may go into the chest beyond just one. Um, we're actually not setting any value here for Vulcanite. This is this visual is just to remind us of what goes in here. So we're just going to put a little bit of Vulcanite in. The reason for that is it stacks to 100. Um, when we're smelting something in uh, the industrial furnace, we'll end up with 144 Vulcanite blocks just sitting here. When the recipe switches to something that doesn't use Vulcanite blocks, that's going to get kicked out to uh, this chest right here. So we want to leave a bit more room than usual in this chest. Um, I think that is half a chest of sand, or maybe even a quarter. It's 2400 items in any case, which is a decent amount. Um, considering we need... 16 to 6, that is a weird ratio. Um, but this one is 4 to 1. So 4 sand makes 1 glass. 2400 over 4. Uh, we could make 600 glass per furnace. 600 times 36. Hmm. So we can only fit enough sand in these chests to make 21,600 glass in one go. That might be something I'll have to address with the uh, combinator logic for deciding what we smelt and when. But basically the idea is, for some resources, actually I think it might only be for sand. Um, the belt can't quite, well, not, not even close, the belt can't keep up with uh, the consumption from the inserters. But we accumulate the sand uh, in this chest while we're smelting other things, and that gets used up when we switch over. Um, obviously we came up with this nice little repeating pattern that gets a full throughput of blue belts to six, well, six half blue belts for six different resources to three different inserters per industrial furnace. Uh, we also need a little bit of room over here to make sure that finished products that end up kicked back into this chest end up coming back to the output belt, and then I think that's just about it. There's nothing, especially compared to the other design, uh, there's nothing particularly fancy, relatively speaking, going on. Like, each, each of these chests just has a limit for each resource that can be put in. And then we've got just a regular filtered whitelist. Um, obviously, we're only smelting five different products in this furnace. 
Um, I think that's a pretty good limit to stick to. Hey, young Jesus. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You can make an Omni Smelter that will smelt literally everything, but you're going to end up having to use significantly more space around each furnace. And the throughput of different resources is going to be a nightmare. Unless you use bots, and then it's probably not going to be that difficult. You just need a lot of them. How are you doing? Yeah, pretty good. It is getting rather hot here. That's the only thing I'm particularly not enjoying at the moment. Um, I may end up starting a bit later with the stream in summer, just as a matter of course. Um, but yeah, that's the main change here. So we've gotten rid of the sushi belt. We don't need to count the things on the sushi belt. We don't need uh, two long combinators per furnace. We do need uh, three filters and three stacks for the input for each furnace, but I think that's fine. We also have way more storage space for the inputs to the furnace. Half a chest for pretty much every resource except sand. We could probably... We could probably increase the amount of sand we put in here, to be honest. Um, I was being a bit overly cautious. Like, if we do... If we do 4,800 sand, that's going to be half a chest. And the rest of... Uh, the other half of the chest could be up to two stacks of Vulcanite block. Um... And whatever other resources get dumped back into this thing from switching recipes. Which won't be as much as we've got in here. Because I've been switching recipes all the time. Testing it. Buy an AC, a portable one. There's, um... I forget what they're called and how they work. Uh, evaporation coolers, uh... I've been thinking about getting one. Supposedly they won't work that well here because it's humid, but it's worth a try, right? I have one in my bedroom running all year, constant 16 degrees. Well, may as well give it a go. Uh, but yeah, I don't particularly feel like going through the process of doing the LTN circuitry again, and redesigning um, the logic that contains the, uh, that controls the furnaces right now. But, oh, and I could also, hmm, if I could only fit two conditions on this, I could very easily make it so that If there's copper left over here, this gets prioritized. I'm sure it'll sort itself out. Let's actually see this. When we switch over to copper... Uh, um, I think the copper that's... It's already gone. Okay, I d yeah. I don't think we have to worry about that at all. As soon as we switch recipe, it gets um, used up. Alright, let's jump back into the regular game, shall we? Maybe I'll come back to this later the stream. Maybe I'll finish it off stream. Um, but the parts that are left to do, um, we've done that before. Well, let's go. Not sure why. Uh, I think I need to. I think I need to start doing my sandbox stuff on a different save because that one is getting really, really slow. I know uh, spamming certain purple items. It says can cause lag. It runs at a perfect sixty UPS, but the saves are incredibly slow. I don't know why. So maybe that's what that is. 
the hot air will go out a hose out the window. The humidity will gather in a tray in the bottom. That you have to empty now and then. Okay. Have to look into it. Um, meanwhile... Oh yeah, I also spent some time uh, designing some new balanced unloaders. Um, after spending literally hours making the spaghetti work, uh, it turns out I probably have... In fact, I definitely could have made this cons this part here considerably more compact, and then it probably... And this part here as well. Well, that part's probably going to be fine, actually. Um, but yeah, we've got a few new uh, balanced unloaders that have dropped. Let's go up here and check them out. Oh, and let's turn on performance mode because that UPS, ouch. That's better. Okay. So I made a couple of blueprint books. You can find these on the Discord and on the Factorio Prints site. Um, I actually did manage to... There's not quite enough room here. Let's, let's go over here. And why don't we place some concrete... I think, I think the bots will actually place that concrete and leave the trees and rocks there. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Yes, indeed. Okay. Um, apparently I'm requesting 200 underground belt at the moment. Don't really need that right now. That's fine though. Okay, trees and rocks. Be gone. And uh, first thing I made is, I mean it's actually really simple but it's something I was trying to figure out how to make for a while. There is just one pretty big downside to this, though. Uh, this is actually a balanced loader. With no combinators. The, the, the one tiny downside that it has is it is very, very slow. I should have just demonstrated this stuff in the... Um, sandbox world actually but uh, let's get a couple of chests here that'll actually be enough so basic it, it, it's really simple we're reading the belt contents um, and as soon as we have uh, 216, as soon as this is completely full, the inserters pick something up. For some reason, even if they are stack inserters, um, they only pick up two items. I also set the uh, hand contents to hold, read contents hold, um, because even weirder, this one on the left over here, and only the one on the left, was flickering and not quite picking something up, if I didn't do that. Which is obviously a bit strange, considering they've got all the same settings. Um, but yeah, no matter what type of uh, inserter you put here, the best that you can actually get out of this is if you had blue inserters without all the upgrades. Um, it is... However, um, uh, 
it is it should keep everything balanced though it's not reading what's in the chests that it's putting stuff into but it doesn't necessarily have to do that in the same vein we've got some combinatorless uh these are loaders hold on uh this these are just your standard um balance loaders with stacked inserters and uh, we've got the filter version that can do up to five resources using filters. Um, I also threw in some examples of doing a shared chest with a constant combinator, including this one, which will uh, only pick up, it'll pick up precisely two stone and five iron plate uh, to control inserting into a furnace. And also some tricks with filter inserters over here. Um, but onto the balanced unloaders. I actually made a few combinatorless balanced unloaders. I really should have jumped into the um, editor mode to show these off. Um, so they're essentially all the same. This is just different shapes for the output belt. But all you have to do is uh, each of these inserters have read hand contents hold. And everything has to be equal to zero. They're all linked to each other. And a little bit of belt just ahead of where they're dropping stuff off is also set to read belt contents hold. Um, this will cause them to all output perfectly in sync. And this, I don't think with a stack size of 8, that's going to be good enough. But with a stack size of 12, um, this will actually saturate four blue belts. And it looks kind of cool. Oh, we've run out of resources. Let's pick these up again. Um, so as long as you control your trains so that you'd never come here with anything other than a multiple of four, um, say a full train, for example, um, it will keep everything balanced, and you don't need a single combinator. It's really so simple, I wonder why I never thought of it before. And I really like the way they all output perfectly in sync. Um, besides that, we've got... Um, the same thing. But for our uh, two belt outputs, that's probably, with a stack size of eight, that'll probably keep up just fine, actually. Let's do the 90 per second combinatorless. Thank you so much, construction bots in the network, for trying to speed that up. So, drop in all of this, and away it goes. I think that looks pretty cool. And it's way more than enough to saturate two blue belts, even with a limited stack size. Um, the only thing is it doesn't know how much is in the individual chests, so if that gets imbalanced somehow, uh, it's not going to be balanced again until the chests are full or empty. Um, so another one I made is, uh, pretty similar, kind of. Well, not really at all, that was a lie. 
So this is a balanced unloader which basically just treats all of these as four big chests. So instead of red wire going from each chest to each stack inserter, solar thingy? Oh, the flare? Wait, what? Coronal mass ejection has passed. Solar thingy. Is that what we were talking about? I think we... Yeah, we weathered the coronal mass ejection earlier with no issue whatsoever. Um, we could probably find the spike in the umbrella. There it is. It's actually only 48 minutes ago. Or 49 or 50-ish. Um, yeah, you can kind of see... About 50 to 48 minutes. Interesting that it ramps up. I guess the... The energy of what's coming in and going out from the... Coronal mass ejection. Oh, we've got a ton of power now. That's fantastic. Well then, Meteor? Yeah. Uh... It took one of our 12 structures to shoot that one down. No worries whatsoever. Uh, so what we have here is just like a regular balanced unloader, except we're treating uh, six chests as like one chest, um, and we're just dividing by four over here, except instead of... I don't know if this part is part of the blueprint. Probably copy-pasted on top of that. Yeah, these are normally, these inserters normally have no condition on them, although now that I think about it, maybe this would be a good addition. Um, it might help keep things a bit balanced. No, it's going to slow things down. Actually, I could be, no, there's, there's going to be gaps if we do it like that, because... The shape of the belts is a factor. Um, balanced unloaders. So if we're going straight, this is the 180 per second combinatorless. Um, the the whatever you're unloading, say iron plate, from this side gets to the splitters quickest, and this side is a bit slower, and this is by far the slowest. Um, it's all bottlenecking into this spot right here. And that sort of gives us time for the inserters to do their thing. Um, I'm actually really curious now. This might be good? Question mark? I never considered doing mixing those two things. But the basics of this one is we've got the red wire all connected to this bit of belt right here. Um, everything has to be greater than or equal to, instead of zero, we're doing negative 72, so there's a bit more slack. Um, so that we could be a bit ahead of average before it bothers to uh, disable the belt. Um, but then basically we have, yeah, there's going to be gaps if we do that. Okay, let's, um, let's remove these for the moment and just put them back without any settings. The downside to this design is, actually, let me just get rid of that for the moment and pick up all this belt. Um, the downside, or one of the downsides to this design is the chests in each set of six uh, is going to get imbalanced. So you're going to end up with 
getting more of a trickle of resources as the resources get low. And then sometimes when a train comes, you're going to be loading these a bit slower. Uh, because this chest might be full, for example. You could fix this by having another row of chests. And you could have a balanced loader from the train. Or rather, you could just have regular and stack inserters taking from the train and then have a... Well, no, that's a lie. You couldn't have a balanced loader circuit here because there's already two wires on this chest. So it would have to be a balanced loader directly from the train into an extra layer of chests if you want to do it that way. But um, as we'll see in a moment, it does go full speed. Um, when this gets imbalanced, uh, I guess... Oh, th there's not enough resources to test this here right now. Whoops. Uh, but when it gets sufficiently imbalanced, um, whichever whichever one of these, whichever set of six chests is further ahead in emptying itself is going to switch off with the belt right here. The problem with this, it's not quite perfect. It will go, if everything is perfectly balanced, this will actually do 180 items per second. Um if everything is perfectly balanced. Once it gets imbalanced, and some of these, uh, like, you know, all of these other belts switch off, and then something gets fixed, this starts flowing again, and then all these other ones uh, keep flowing at full speed, then you're going to get uh, a little, little tiny gaps. Um, there's going to be more at first, and then they're going to taper off, but they're never quite going to go away. Every once in a little while, you'll get one of these belts switching off for, like, one tick or something. So, you'll never get... Unless it gets perfectly balanced again, you'll never get back to a perfect 180 uh, items per minute. Because the slack that this thing allows um we've kind of you know dropped down to that baseline um but there is a solution to that i just gonna I'm just gonna remove all of this to make sure we're not copy pasting some weird settings uh this is very almost the holy grail of what I've been hoping to make um, for quite a long time when it comes to the fast balanced unloaders. Uh, the only downside to this one, again, and you could fix it by having another row of chests with a balanced loader, is you will get, you know, the middle chests emptying much slower than the ones on the outside for each set of six chests. But what this is, is basically the exact same design as we were just looking at, except we've added some latch behavior to uh, the enable disable on these express belts. So they are receiving a signal of the negative average of what's in each set of six chests. They're receiving a positive value of what's in the six chests that it's assigned to on the red wire. And then we're doing the same thing here as... Where is it? Is this it? No. What? What happened to... Did I not... Did I l load the wrong save or something? I could have sworn we were building a... I definitely remember placing landfill here. Oh, wait, no. Space exploration. This is... 
This is what I loaded, right? 210 hours. All of our autosaves are this one. Well, I'll just have to do it again. Um, anyway, we were looking at the... Yeah, I distinctly, I distinctly remember I kept bringing too many items over here and I had to put them in chests. Oh well. Um, and now I have to fix this circuit again. This is kind of a good time and place to demonstrate it. So I actually misremembered when I recreated this circuit exactly how it works. Um, what we're doing here is reading the amount of each fluid that we have. If heavy oil is greater than light oil, we output one heavy oil times 5,000. Uh, if light oil is greater than petroleum, we output 5,000 light oil. And that just loops straight back around to this system. So it's a kind of memory cell. If we end up with more heavy oil than we have light oil, we pretend that we've got an extra 5,000 heavy oil until that condition is no longer met, even with the pretend 5,000 heavy oil. Um, so that's so that we don't just switch our cracking on and off every, you know, two frames or something. A baker so uh, baker staunch. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What did I just come into? Why? Oh. It's because you posted a link. FFS even your clips? FFS I need... Whoops. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 Where is... No, 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 no. Stop. Uh... Clip. What happened to... Yes, indeed. Did I not... Did I dream it, or did I spend, like, probably an, half an hour to an hour building an oil facility over here, when we've only built the um, whole liquefaction version of it in this save? Hey, so JMO, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, maybe I'll have to tinker around with that bot. Um, before I forget, let's fix this one over here. So that isn't red wire. That should be green wire. Why is it not working? I need to go all the way back here. Uh, here it is. So yeah, um, we can save one combinator. Under specific circumstances, we can save one combinator from the usual latch design with this. And we're doing the same thing over here. So um, I th think... Oh, this is specifically for iron. And I think it has to be configured for whichever resource. But... So if everything is greater than zero... If, if we have an above average amount of iron plate... Output one iron plate times 72... And then that's going into these chests. So we're pretending we have, I think it's um, 6 times 12. Yeah, the maximum of uh, one, one stack from each of these stack inserters. Um, if, we, if this set of 6 chests has an above average amount of iron plate, pretend we've got 72 more until that isn't the case. And... Basically what that does is, so while these, um, if, if one of these gets blocked or something, 
we're going to end up with more iron plate here than the other sets of chests. Um, this is, these ones are going to be outputting, outputting at full speed until they realize they're below average and they're immediately going to stop. Um, and this one has fallen behind. It needs to catch up. So instead of ending up with this express transport belt switching on and off and never quite getting back to full throughput, um, it's going to output until it's a little bit ahead of uh, the other sets of chests. And then even after having some kind of stoppage or something, this system will recover to doing a full output. Just heard so much confusion I had to clip it. Yeah, I don't know how... Um, like, I'm pretty sure I just saved it wrong somehow, but I don't know how that could have happened. It's very confusing. Um... I mean, I remember enough about the design that we came up with that was mostly the same as this. So, to some extent, it's going to be kind of a copy-paste job. But yeah, it does have a couple of downsides, but that is a maximally compact um, 180 item per second. Like, it only takes up this much space. And it will do a full four blue uh, four blue belts of output, while keeping not the individual chests but the cargo wagons uh, balanced. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's get started on this oil system. I guess we're going to need some refineries and some chemical plants and a whole lot of pipe uh apparently it's oh god nope 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 okay we're definitely going to copy this will be crude oil, but other than that, I think we'll copy what we've got over here to get started. Make sure we get rid of the LTN requests before we start. Let's just get rid of all the LTN circuitry until we're ready. Make sure we don't get an accidental train coming here. Uh, another, another clip. A evil plot. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. There it is. Yeah, the bonbon. You got it right. That is uh, that is our mysteriously missing oil system. Oh, I'm building it in the wrong place this time. How many undos do we have? Enough. I accidentally undid something extra. I hope it was this. Yeah, that's fine. That's from the last stream. Yep. Now I got Genesis in my head to bend. Rip. Okay, let's try that again. Looks like something's been dropped here, but it's literally just a rock. We're going to need some oil refineries. We'll start with this one. I'm pretty sure we had this right up against the side. 
In fact, I can go ahead and look at that clip to find out. I might cheat ever so slightly to recreate this. So that belt goes like that. We can save a bit of space here because we're not going to have that much throughput of iron plate. This would be a great opportunity to use the combinatorless balanced load, uh, balanced unloader. The halo effect? Shadow mines, see if this will undo that. Is in Factorio anyway how to get into circuit network items which are requested by bots in Robo Network? I only find a mod for that and still doesn't work. Circuit network items which are requested by bot network. Do you mean like setting the requests with the circuit network? Because you can do that with vanilla. I'm guessing you probably mean something else. Um, so this is going to go here. Actually, no. The th I think we calculated that we need like eight um, iron plate per second, so this is actually overkill. Let's get rid of all that. I think this goes all the way over here. And then there's a beacon and a substation here somewhere. It's right about... I think that is one, two, three. Right there. Where's my beacons? Or is that two tiles or three? I think it's two. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. So, one, two. Our oil system starts here. And we're going to change the way we're doing these pipes a bit. Uh, crude oil goes like this. Let's make a blueprint. Snap to grid relative and width is 6. And we're going to go all the way across here. Don't forget the landfill. Now this is the world we live in, and these are the hands we're given. Use them and let's start trying to make it a place worth fighting for. Seems good to me. I forgot how big this square was, but that's fine. Okay. There's no power poles up here because... Because landfill. Uh, uh, whatever, let's just... I was going to say let's get rid of all this swampy stuff. Um... I think I will, actually. That was all my landfill. Oh, whoops, I would have been a bit more conservative with it if I'd realized. We can probably make some more, though. Landfill... that is not a whole lot of landfill. I don't think that's going to be enough. 
Uh, that's not what we're looking for. Let's just place this thing again. This entire thing. We need just a teensy bit of landfill right here. And then probably here as well. I think that was here. Nope. Okay, we've barely got enough. Fantastic. Okay. So, is this not going all the way over? I think it probably would. Um, that's, that's the main part that I wanted to make sure we get the same... Oh, I think this goes over here, actually. Or was it here? Yeah. That's the main part that I wanted to get the same, and I can figure out the rest as we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Perfect. Let's get rid of that for now. Can the belts please stop? There we go. Nice, simple, balanced unloader. Read hand contents hold. Everything has to be equal to zero. Copy all that. Considering how we only need eight items per second, that is probably all it's going to take. Um, I'm pretty sure, but maybe we could make it look a bit more nice and sort of symmetrical if we do it like this. Alright, let's give it a little demonstration, shall we? Oh, there actually... There wasn't enough to pick up to demonstrate it this time. Whoops. Okay, uh, we would like to have some more pipe, please. And before we get too carried away, let's not forget that we can tighten this part up a little bit. Um, because the light oil can go straight to that row. We don't need any of this. And we can move all of these ones up one tile. And as for this stuff, I think I think all of that just gets moved up on tile, actually. And don't forget to connect these wires once those storage tanks are in place again. Situation on different planet than Narvis. I want to build power plant. I put blueprint and no, I want to set request on Nalvis, but how do I get them item need to build power plant into network? I know how to set values, but I need to know the values. I connect to RoboPort, but only allows it for about robots and stuff in the network. Uh, are you trying to figure out communication between two different surfaces? because uh, the AAI signal transmitters are probably what you're looking for there. 
um, they require 10 megawatt and 2 megawatt respectively, um, but they can transmit or receive on as many stations as you choose, I think. Um, well, I don't know, does the transmitter only transmit to one station at a time? You could probably build a network of them in any case if you somehow need it to... If you need more than, like, two-way communication between these things. I blame you, by the way. What for? Finished the Minecraft mod I was playing and have now jumped back into Satisfactory. Hope you enjoy it. By the way, um, I think... Someone told me just as I was playing uh, Satisfactory a couple of days ago that... Did I run out of... I did. Let's go get some more then, I think. But first... Put these pipes in here. And that'll probably help. He was playing the Minecraft mod with me as well. Didn't realize Update 5 added dedicated servers, so I set one up for a friend to play on. Nice. I didn't realize there weren't already dedicated servers. Although, now that you mention it, I think I vaguely remember something like that when I was playing multiplayer with, uh, a long time ago. New in Update 5? Yeah, I think someone mentioned um, that I didn't even need to be running the experimental build. Like, they had just pushed it to the stable build last time I was playing. Is that right? Oh yeah, you mentioned that. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Um... As soon as we pick these items up, we'll head back here. Uh, we do need to make sure these wires are connected. Probably could have just copy-pasted it to begin with. Would have been a bit easier. And then we need to copy-paste all of this over a few times. Uh, I need to make sure... I think I removed it from the blueprint, but there was like an extra underground sticking out somewhere. It looks like it's been fixed. So we need to copy this over a bit further. Like so. Also need to add some beacons to it. Actually, I think I addressed this last time, but I'm not sure. Um, oh good, we can just pick a dollies this. That's going to be easier. Deja vu. Obviously, the build process is going to go a bit quicker this time. I didn't just move that, did I? No, we're good. And then this goes here. Why is this not... Oh. Fair enough. Um, how many of these do we have? 15. Let's make it an even 16. Get rid of that. And we need some beacons, possibly, maybe. It's going to be power controlled anyway. So there's no kill like overkill. And I don't know if we'll need... If we do need beacons for the heavy oil to light oil cracking, 
I think we probably won't need it because unlike coal liquefaction, there's going to be a lot less heavy oil. Um, also, we'll have to move those wires over. It's going to be tricky. And also, I don't see a good way to have a repeating pattern where we have two chemical plants touching one beacon for this one. Semifuse, thank you for the prime sub. Two months, much appreciated. Did I not pick up more storage tanks, or did I place them all already? Uh, very much appreciated. Anytime any of you all want to put something in the tip jar. Very humbly motivated. Thank you. Also, I love that rethink. It's kind of cute. Let's pick up this one. Why was, why was one of my bots crawling over from God knows where with a single storage tank? That's kind of weird. Okay. Let's tidy this up and figure out where we're going to put it instead. Um, this is indeed going to be crude oil. But I think I could probably fit it somewhere a little bit tidier. Instead of this. And then... Did I actually bring exactly one less oil refinery than necessary? Oh, no, they're in the chest, aren't they? Let's go get them. doop a -doop. I wonder what we just finished researching. Worker robot cargo size is approaching. Um, I don't know how I want to do this belt, though. I think I calculated that we're only going to need one belt here, actually. So if that's the case, we could just do some undergrounds over here to fit it through. Um, we are going to want a row of... Sulfur. I don't foresee... Okay, we're definitely going to move that over a little bit. And we'll probably end up reducing the number of these, since we're going to use um, nothing but speed modules. And that'll make more room for sulfur over here. I mean, not sulfur, sulfuric acid. run out of beacons as well. Uh, how many more do I need? One, two, three, four, five. I don't think we're going to need many more. Let's just pick up another standard stack of them. Uh, also, allow infinite of these. Alright, back we go. Thought you'd gotten away, had you? Um, so that goes there. No, it doesn't. Wait. That was actually... I left some of these in place. Okay. So that should be fine. That goes there. And that goes there. Maybe we'll have this one go through here. Something is wrong here, I think.
But yeah, that that would normally go over here. And that's gonna maybe be in the way of our blue belt for coal. So maybe in this instance I'll just let it that's a problem. I placed this one wrong. Okay, that goes there, that goes there. Looks like the rest of these are correct. Fantastic. Back to base. Okay. Beacons. We were going to do something very similar to this uh, sulfuric acid build, I believe. Oh, and I wanted to see how many products we could possibly make here as well. Like, uh... We definitely want to do plastic, sulfur, sulfuric acid, light oil, petroleum, and lubricant. Is there anything else that is... Oh, and explosives. Uh, is there anything else that we might want to make here so that we don't have to have trains running around to do it? Um, let's update our... Will it do it with ghosts? No, it doesn't. Okay, so nothing but speed modules in the beacons, and let's see how many chemical plants we need in order to fit all of this. That's actually a really good fit. Wait, this one's a bit different. We're not necessarily going to do this one like so. So we'll leave that as it is for now. Actually, those are all like that. Okay. Let's assume we're going to keep that all the same as it is for the moment. Uh, we're going to have to connect these up like so. And for now, we'll just connect them to the power grid. So now a rate calculator can tell us exactly how much this will be. Considerably more than 45. How many do we need for 45? Oh, it's uh, 4.9. I misread it for a second. 44.64. If we use... 9, which is an odd number, so let's make it 10, shall we? So we stop this right here. Oops. Forty-nine point six per second is a little bit more than a blue belt. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I think I think if we move this beacon up here, we should be able to put the sulfur on this side, no problem. Five on this side, and five on this side. Okay. Let's get rid of that for the moment. So once we've got our sulfur, I kind of would like to see if I could make this look a bit more symmetrical. Uh, it's obviously not going to be perfectly symmetrical since there's a three tile beacon right in the middle. 
I do like this design right here. Or sulfur on this melt iron on this one. Sulfuric acid comes out this way. Should we? What if we do it a bit like this? I'm not sure, actually. I want to have a decent amount of storage for water because sulfuric acid uh, can go through it very quickly, but production is sort of thirsty. So let's just move you over here for now. And that could be one tile closer. If this goes over here. I do want to take advantage of this beacon for uh, lubricant. Because I think that's all we're going to need, actually. Let's suppose that's going to go there. Heavy oil. Um, I don't remember how we are supposed to get heavy oil down here. But I'm pretty sure it was like just sort of straight through. Because otherwise we would have to go all the way around here or something. Oh, that's, that's very easy, actually. And then this one can go away. Let's just leave that there for now. So this is petroleum. So if heavy oil comes through here... Lubricant would go... this is all one tile too far up already. Lubricant can go here. We could probably make four of them. This is still one tile too far north. And we have a pipe like this. Maybe fit a little bit more water. Uh, lubricant output isn't going to be a problem. Unless, well, could probably have that come down like this. Tentatively. Alright, can we fit a substation here, touching everything? Uh, not the way things are now. Why don't we move this? Actually, I would kind of like this to be just connected directly from here as well. Well, that's not exactly symmetrical. I don't think I'm going to come up with something that I like aesthetically for a bit more water storage over here. How much sulfuric acid does 25,000 water make? Um, that's too much. 15.5 thousand. That's no good. 
I kind of want to have enough water storage here for 100k sulfur, sulfuric acid. It can use 800 per second. Um, the rest of this, without cracking, 300. So without making sulfur or anything like that, that's already almost as much as a pipe can deliver. Yeah, I'd definitely like to have more water storage over here if I can. We do it like this. That is 75k. Um, that's pretty close. It's about... 45,000 sulfuric acid. I don't think the sulfuric acid train has to leave that often, but... Oh, we don't actually need this underground. We just do it like this, but then the long arm is going to have to pick up off a corner. Does that matter? No, iron is so slow that this is always going to be saturated. That's probably fine. Okay. So I'm pretty sure we're not going to do better than this layout for sulfuric acid. We're using the minimum of space to deliver water. Uh, that's only 120 per second. Maybe we could just put some water storage up here. And that way we can have a lot of it. That's going to touch... Well, we can change this one. Yeah, I think I like that a lot better. So that's an extra three train loads of water that can be stored down here. That is one, two, three, four, five train loads of water. Um, we do need... That's a little bit upsetting. We do need the water to be able to come down here. Also, whereabouts are we... Gonna connect this water to? Like this? That looks a little bit... Unneat. This would be about the same. On the other hand, we have to have this bit of pipe here anyway. And this would be full length. That's probably the least weird looking way to do it. That's kind of consistent with this one over here. Alright, cool. So water goes over here. And then all the way down this way. That one extra bit of distance on the pipe is a little bit upsetting, but maybe that looks a bit better. Yeah, I think I I don't I don't really know, but maybe that looks better. How are we going to get water to this pipe? Um, I genuinely don't know. Maybe we could move this... We could move the water storage down a little bit. And we could have that line up like so. Pretty straightforward. We also need this one. And 
this goes here. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Okay. I feel like that might look a little bit better. It's kind of more central and snug. Speaking of which... Yeah, I like that more. This also needs a wire connection. Right about here. Right, so... Time to figure out how our train stations are going to look. Obviously, this is the first step. And then I would like this one to fit over here. And I think we're going to have an easier time fitting some decent stations. Uh, this physical solid drop-off right here is going to be easier for one thing. But for now, let's see how this goes. Pretty sure that's the middle. Yep, that'll be fine. Uh, since these are pickup stations, we're not going to get trains coming here until everything's ready. And obviously this one is going to move, uh, be moving up a bit. Explosives are going to be able to have a normal uh, pickup station. we're going to be making explosives that quickly. How do we... Coal, sulfur, and water. Uh, what did we need coal for besides explosives? It was plastic. And at full speed... Well, no, not at full speed. How much plastic is this making? 48.6 per second uses just over 20 coal. Um, and considering the only thing we need coal for this time is plastic and explosives. Explosives are really quite slow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure one belt of coal is going to be all we need. So, can we maybe... Can we maybe take advantage of these same beacons? That'd be nice. Oh, this would be powering the fracking at all times. Let's not do that. This might be a bit better. Something like that. Um, we could do some under... No, we couldn't. Uh, let's see. Can we put the beacons in the middle? Use undergrounds for the sulfur. And still... Balance all of this stuff. On... Put, put all of this on one side of the belt. 
Not unless I output this one over here. That's going to going to be kind of ugly. Or I could. Well, that still sort of doesn't work. I can't move these over because they're not going to line up with the pipes. At this rate, I think I would have to. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I don't think I'm going to like the aesthetics of it when I'm done. Um, just to put this on the correct side of the belt. What if we do this? Actually, it would probably look something like... Like that. Don't need a splitter. We could do worse, I guess. Technically, probably, maybe. What? I don't know how I just cancelled that sale, but okay. Alright, so... If we make plastic... That requires coal. We'll get the... Does this, this requires sulfur, not petroleum. We can pick up the sulfur from here directly. Maybe plastic will end up being something like this. It wouldn't be too bad, I guess. It's kind of lopsided. We'll see how many plastic machines we actually need first. Uh, can we get some power for this? So just to confirm, this is more than a blue belt of sulfur. Actually, if we're outputting more than a blue belt of sulfur, but we're taking from that belt as we go, that might actually result in more than 45 items per second being made at peak demand. That might be kind of neat. In fact, I don't see why it wouldn't result in that. Alright, so coal, I guess, could be on this belt. Um, actually, for plastic, the coal is slower than the explosives. Same goes for explosives, although it's very slow. So why don't we put the coal down here? And we'll use a long arm to insert it. I don't think this is going to be enough plastic, even with full speed beacons. Okay. It's like half. 24.8 plastic bars. Just, just under half of a saturated blue belt. Uh, that is in the wrong spot. And then... Output is going to be here. Oh, I probably should have thought of that. Output for explosives, I guess we could do an underground like, like so. Or we could do it over this belt, like this. Either way, I don't think I want to change the layout of the actual machines. So... What if we do that? I'll probably move the beacon up one tile and use this row here for pipes for the plastic.
So this would be... 49? Wait, what? 49.6 plastic per second. I thought this was going to be slightly less than a blue pelt. How did I come to that conclusion? Maybe I was missing a... touching a beacon or something somehow. 4.96 per second times 10. That makes sense. Yeah, I must have been missing a module or a beacon or something. Um, if this goes all the way up here... Maybe we could do a cleaner build... ...for this. I like that better. Alright, cool. No more undergrounds over here. It's just enough to touch all of those machines. And petroleum shouldn't be a problem. We could do it this way. We would need an underground here. I think I would prefer something that'll be consistent when we do it like this. I um, don't know why those all have to stick out. Probably just a relic of the last build. So what if... Oh, actually... I'm gonna need a water connection like so, or like so. Probably like this. If we do that... How is this pipe gonna work? We could do... Something a bit more like this. That actually reaches over three machines. We could move the substations. And have water connectors like so. And then... Water goes here. And that'll make it easy to connect all of our petroleum. How much petroleum do we actually need here? That needs to be on the right, if that's going to be like so. A bit more symmetrical. Left, left, right, right. Could also flip the water into the inserter line and still have the substations. Into the inserter line. Oh, like, like that? Yeah, I could move the... Long arm to the side a bit. That'd work. Absolutely. Uh, no, more like the pipes. More like the pipes. Flip the water into the inserter line. I don't understand. If the underground pipes were too lower. Oh, okay, like, like that kind of thing? Of the water. Something like this. Yeah. Maybe that'd, maybe that'd look a bit cleaner. Even though our long arms are not going to be... But we do need two inserters... Facing this direction for the explosives, though. One for output, one for input. 
the first like that. So then we don't have another. So water input is still on the right. Water input is still on the right. Oh, like to have the substations placed like this, you could do the water like this. That might look a little bit cleaner. Yeah, I, th I think I do like that better, actually. Nice. Let's put this up. Whoops, 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 whoops. Oh, we could probably move this over a tile as well. So it's going to be sulfur, coal, explosive? Not explosive, that's where plastic goes. Um, I think we're going to have to... No, where are we going to output the, pl uh, the explosives? That wouldn't even reach. I hope we can, I hope we're not going to get uh I hope we are not going to have to get too messy with the belt for explosives. We could do something like this. I'm not the biggest fan of that, but uh why is Oh, this one's different, that's why. So that could go... Wait, what? This is an any, any, outy, outy, any. That's weird. Okay, that goes here. And then... What's the most consistent look that I could pull off for this? There isn't one? I, I, I can also probably move this down here as well. I'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, oh, all research is done. I don't know if there's anything left that we can get done right now. All I'm seeing is multiple types of space science required. Here we go. Speed module, efficiency module, and productivity module 4. We need 900 rocket science packs for this. We have 1.7k. And plenty of other science packs. Fantastic. Uh, we could also do... I think there's like a... Artillery shell range. Stronger explosives. Robot follow account. Uh, we're going to run out of rocket science packs for this one. But we'll queue that one up later. Flamer damage. Why not? All right, let's let's queue up the modules. Why not? And then flammables, and that might be enough. Rocket damage plus fifty percent. Wow. Don't care about robot followers. The count that is. All right. So, is this really how we're going to output explosives? I think it might be. That doesn't quite work.
How consistent can we make this look? That's not going to work. That's kind of okay. And then we're going to run out of space here, possibly. If this goes like so, sulfur has to go somewhere, explosives has to go somewhere. That's kind of a spaghetti mess, but it'll work. We'll say we'll do that tentatively. Um, and then this goes here. Why is that one? What? Coal and sulfur in. Oh, this is. I am a derp. There we go. So that is sulfur, that is coal, that is plastic. I think that might be everything. Maybe. Uh, does the petroleum actually get where it needs to go? How much petroleum would this be? Let's check. I think we probably only need one pipe connection for all of that. Uh, explosives doesn't use petroleum, so we can run rate calculator directly over here. 400 per second is considerably less than a regular pipe. So... We can just connect this at the side, and that'll be fine. And if we really want to be crazy, we could connect it over here as well. Alright, looks like we're going to have plenty of space left over in the end. That is a good sign. Um, what else are we making. Lubricant goes down here, sulfuric acid, explosives, sulfur, plastic. I think that's everything. Unless we also want to make some flamethrower fuel or something. We could smelt the steel right here. Uh, but then we also need crude oil. That's not what I was expecting. Uh, actually, that would be as easy as dropping a furnace right here. And I don't have any on me right now, though. A uh, furnace right here and take the crude oil from here. Drop a chemical plant. Easy. I haven't actually been using flamethrower ammo though. Not the portable kind. Uh, cannon shells? I think we'd rather make those somewhere else. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think everything else... That is an oil product. Oh, rocket fuel. Definitely a good place to make rocket fuel. Um, well, we're not fitting them 
with those existing beacons, that's for sure. Uh, is there anything else as well? I suppose we could also make processed fuel here. Do I want to use, like, processed fuel and rocket fuel? I know they stack to the same amount of energy. I think you can turn rocket fuel into processed fuel and you get more out of it, ultimately. It's kind of like productivity modules. But other than that... Iron and copper and sulfuric acid is batteries. Probably do that somewhere else, but if we could squeeze copper into this. This is a challenge I haven't attempted yet, is uh, a combined drop-off station that's all on the one side. So we're requesting iron and copper into this, and then we'd have to manage the outputs so that iron goes on one side of the belt and copper on the other. Come to think of it, if I could pull this off, um, that maybe would have, you know, saved a lot of trouble recombining these resources onto half belts later on. I'm very curious as to how to do that tentatively. Can it be done? Uh, let's just start with six of these for now. And we'll put in iron and copper. Whoops. A little bit too fast with the mouse then. Yep. Oh, nope. Did it again. Nice and slow. So... I don't know that we could do it this way. Maybe if we just had four chests. Or maybe if we have... Hmm. I think I would want six chests if at all possible, so there's more storage. So, let's see. Filter inserters. Uh, what if we output this to one belt? And then... Surely it's not going to be as easy as this. If we had one big container here, that would make it very, very simple. Let's say copper goes on this side, and... Okay, I think I know a really easy way to do this, but the throughput will probably really suck. Read belt contents hold. Set filters blacklist. Uh, copy that to all of these. And then... That would go here. That actually kind of works. It's not going to be... T it's not going to be very high throughput, but it will work. Storehouse mod? Yeah. I'm definitely going to use something like that next time. Um, just to make some of this stuff easier for once. Take a little break from so many puzzles around just having one by one chests. Can't you filter stuff with splitters? Yes, indeed. This is actually... So if we copy that three more times... The question is how much throughput we can really get with this. 
Not a whole lot. But how much do we actually need? If we multiply that by four... Actually, I wonder if... I wonder if uh, merging all of that into two belts would add up to... Or even one belt, obviously. Um, I think we're going to end up exporting uh, sulfuric acid to make batteries, but it is an interesting idea. So, productivity modules, beacon, rate calculator. It only wants... So if we double this, that's only four iron plate and four copper per, uh, plate per second. Maybe this isn't such a bad idea. Do we have room? We definitely have... We probably maybe have room. To make that happen. If it's all going to bottleneck into one belt anyway. Uh, what if... Alright, obviously these are going to go. And... So it's going to look something like this, maybe? Uh, no. What's the most compact way to do this? Probably like so. Yeah. Oops, there, 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 and there. And take all of this back. And obviously set the filter. Um, how about we disconnect this for the moment? Iron plate. There's copper. And th no. How dare you? Uh, plate and iron plate and then go oh that's not gonna work and <laughs> that is not even remotely gonna work hmm I feel like I should have seen that coming so we need the sensor to be uh, much closer. Well, there would be a lot more belt for this to travel down, but I don't know that that would actually solve it. Why is that not going anywhere? Oh, there's a little bit of iron there. Yeah, that's why. Merging chests mod? Yes, indeed. Alright. I, th I think, um... I don't think I'm gonna come up with something that I like here right now, but it's definitely a new problem to think about. We could make batteries here, but I don't think that's the way to go about it. I would rather make one giant super battery production area. Why is this missing things? I thought we finished this. Oh no, how much... 
How much progress is missing? Oh no. Uh, we've got these nuclear plants inactive. That's not great. This one is at least fully constructed and working. I don't know if my fix... Yeah, it looks like the... There's some problems with this train station still. Oh, and half of our rail network has stopped because of it. That's cool. Alright, so we're going to have to fix that all over again. I should definitely make a backup save on the daily. I still don't know how this happened, though. Alright, sulfur is going to come down here. And then... We're going to have a pickup station for it right here. And we just need the one belt. Bring it down here, like so. Um, I think it might be time to activate some of our train stations. So we can see some resources flowing. So, first of all... Well, first I'm going to need some... Uh, some more storage tanks. Make sure my personal rope logistics are turned on. Should probably upgrade more of these walls as well. But I want to make sure... I'm pretty sure... Okay, no. This needs fixing again. Ah, uh, that's not great. That is a full inventory. And a bunch of random stuff I made little blueprints of. Or just copy-pasted and then activated jetpack. Don't think I need this many more chemical plants. Um, let's get rid of half of those. Don't need any more oil refineries. Probably don't need that many storage tanks, but I don't want to make another trip. And let's get some crude oil over here. But first, since this is a dual station, um, each divided by 8,000. And then black divided by... No, wait, it's 7 minus... Black, output, request priority, a Midjagus, good to see you again, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Alright, so that's going to go there, turn this off for the moment, a Veldak, good to see you again, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. And we'll do something similar up here. Uh, how about... How about we just divide that by 25k and call it close enough? I'm late, missed two hours of the stream. 
Uh, rip. What can you do? I was going to say you only actually missed one because I started late, but yeah, it actually shows two hours. Okay, so this will be 25k. Actually, that's going to mess with the priorities. I better, I'd better calculate it correctly. Um, so we can fit 200k here. Um, I don't think I want to bother with the priority things for fluids, to be honest. I don't think I've been doing that. Yeah, no. This is fine. This is actually all we need. Alright, so... I think we need a multiply by one over here, maybe. Let's make this call specifically. Whoops specifically so that we're not um, getting contamination from these signals over here and can I actually just connect this here directly or is that going to be a problem well we'll soon find out so we're requesting 200,000 make it like 180,000 oil, and 55,000, oh, whoops, change that before LTN thinks that, okay, the constant combinator is off, so that wasn't going to happen, but I was going to say change that before LTN sends a train to pick up this imaginary coal. And request stack threshold, and that should do it. Also went to space and used all the science there. Now I need to automate science delivery to orbit. Nice. Did coal mining today and vulcanite processing. When it will have nine uh, tier nine modules, it'll output one full blue belt of vulcanite blocks. Is that just from one machine, or yay, indeed? Uh, let's copy this and change it. Iron plate is sixteen k. Output. Let's make it blue. And we're asking for, uh, just say four train loads of iron plate and a bunch of water. I don't know if we've got anywhere for a water train, uh, for a fluid train to pick up water at the moment. But I'd like to set it up anyway. Also, maybe this would look a little bit tidier. GF is listening for the first time the stream and loves the cheering sound effect. Oh no. Here we go. It's four core machines, they do 50%, but when I get mining productivity upgrades, it will output enough. Nice. Triple yay. All right, so this goes here, uh, this goes here, and this will be blue as well. And then we need some substations up here. Actually, we just need, like, one more substation over here. What if we put this one here, and that's all it takes? What's your problem? You're picking up crude oil, and 
you've already got it. And you think you have no path over here. Probably because you have no path over here. I think the signaling should already be correct. Yep, looks good. Um, still haven't fixed this part. Another little thing that we had to fix in a previous stream. That was actually stopping a train from going through that sector because this train is sitting over here. Alright, there's our fluid. Uh, pumps are facing the wrong way, though. That didn't take very long. And now we have crude. I don't think we have any water in the LTM train system. Um, I kind of want to... As much as we're going to get water from here, I kind of want to finish the blueprint without those pipes, but I guess for now, I'll just do it like this. Do I have an offshore pump? I do not. And it's going to need some power because space exploration. Alright. Oh, and I haven't actually got it set up so that water will accumulate up here coming from down here. That's probably fine though. Okay, there's our oil. Uh, petroleum, I mean petroleum, lubricant is getting produced as well, fantastic. Maybe we'll put, oh, maybe we won't put uh, lubricant storage right here. I think lubricant's going to be the one at the southeast, yes. So that would go up here. Could probably do a little bit better with the placement for that one. This is fine. Um, I think I'll bring it over this way. It'll be a bit more straightforward. Actually, no, because then it's going to encroach on the roundabout. Maybe just bring it over this way a bit. That's not going to quite have power. I think I like this better. That's almost good. Almost. maybe live with this. At least that's what I'm trying to tell myself. How much would this make? 99 per second. 99.2 to be precise. Alright. And don't forget to signal this part. Hello, Tyran. Hope you're well. Nick Nock. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well as well. And, uh... Lentilion. Yay. Yay. Welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Alright, let's put our... 
sulfuric acid down here once we get it working. We do need... I wonder why we haven't had iron plate delivered here yet. That's a little bit concerning. What do we got? 1.3k, 2.4k, 15k, and it looks like it looks like we have no iron ore. That's probably a bad thing. What's going on with our... Uh... Um, I think we're in trouble. What's happening here? Also, that is a fat meteorite just sitting in the middle of all this. We've got 8.1k iron ore right here, so... Oh. I think I know... I think I see what happened here. Um, this is probably set to, like, only output if 8.2 thousand or something. Where is it? 8.4 thousand. That may be a bit much. That's 8 thousand iron. And that is 8.1. But we've got other resources that should be getting whisked away. Why is copper not being removed? Um, are we not... There's no low density structures. Because... Well, it would probably help if we finished our low density structure build. Let's do that first. Oh, here comes a train. Hopefully it's iron. It is iron. Fantastic. We'll check back here later. Right now we need to make sure the LDS build is actually finished. Because low density structures are critical for our resource sink. Currently we're producing too much copper. And... Because we get a specific ratio of different resources from pulverizing our core mining uh, core fragments, um, we're actually not able to output other resources because we've got too much copper. So what are we missing here? A lot of blue inserters. Let's go pick those up. Blue inserters. Yoink. And yoink. And away go our bots. I'm really surprised this save just happens to have all of the spaghetti finished, but we're missing some inserters here. You can dibble the com mo. Com mo. Dibble the com mo. What does it mean? And there goes LDS. Fantastic. Lamau? I didn't write it. Able to come move. So let's make this symmetrical. That's a little bit better. Right, so how many LDS do we have here? Only 860. Dang it, wireless keyboard lost battery. <laughs> nice. Um, what are we missing here? Plastic. And plastic should have... Oh. Oh, we've still got 
this problem. It's almost like... It's almost like I just didn't save after the last stream, or the last uh, Factorio stream, or something. So this was a really interesting one to figure out. This is not a fluke. Every single time we would get a little bit of sulfur in three of these cargo wagons and not know why, it turned out this, the train is actually trying to pick up plastic from over here, but the signaling is wrong. Um, LTN creates a temporary train stop over here. The train is only able to approach the temporary train stop that is exactly where this train stop here is from the wrong direction um, because of the signaling. So LTN creates temporary stop, train comes here, it then moves on to the nearest station called... Uh, Plastic pickup, basically. Plastic and light oil pickup. Um, which the nearest reachable one is over here. So the train stops here for a second, facing to the left, with three cargo wagons sticking out here. Picks up just a little bit of sulfur that the inserters have just sticking out from previously. And then goes around and ends up over this way. The solution to this is to make sure the train is actually able to approach uh, from the north. So we need a signal there, and there, and there, and that should be it. Um, and it just happens to be not exactly correct, but functional from the other direction. Um, why is that? There we go. That'll be fine, probably. So, all we have to do to fix this one is take away the sulfur, and the next train should be fine. And the signals you put last stream are missing. Yeah. It seems like Normally I save like three times because I'm overly cautious about it, but it seems like it just didn't save at the end of that stream or something. It's really weird. Luckily we did save at least once throughout the stream. Um, but yeah, that'll get LDS going again which will mean we have some low density structures up here, which means we can delete copper, which means... Oh, and here's a bunch of iron that I never recovered. Um, I kind of want to... Let's grab a train. Please come over here. Wait until full cargo. And then... Uh, and then drop it off at iron ore drop off. Iron, there we go. Empty cargo. I think it'll reset once it gets to the depot, so that's basically a temporary stop, effectively. Alright, train is here. Um, now we want to temporarily turn these inserters around. We've actually got like seven train loads here. Um, this might take a minute. But it's definitely easier to do it this way than... Um, than trying to pick it all up ourselves. What? No. No, go here first. You silly... Silly train. So that'll get the smelters going again. Bottom of LDS had an output belt going nowhere. I think I remember that one. Let's have a look. 
Oh, and before I do, um, full cargo. And passenger present. Don't do anything until I get back. Okay, bottom of LDS does indeed have a belt missing. And this one. Much better. Is this one connected? It is not. There we go. Alright, that'll be a burst of LDS. We're a quarter of the way to filling a train. Okay, this one is back. It's got its 8,000. I could just keep that schedule as it is, and we'll keep doing this until the, uh, until the iron is gone. It's going to take another five trips, I think. Meanwhile, we are accumulating sulfur, not sulfuric acid, because, because there's no iron. What happened to... is it stuck? What? Uh, what happened? I th is this reachable? Same, this is the exact same problem as what we just described with the, uh, the train picking up plastic and getting sulfur. This one's not getting any other random items, however, there is a signal that we haven't placed over here somewhere. Oh, it's a bit of rail that's missing, just like the other side. Okay. So the train came here, I think, from the wrong side, and then went to the nearest reachable station with that name. Let's have you... Come over here, please. And that should sort that one out. As for you, please go back to the station again. There's obviously not a multiple of four iron plate uh, in these cargo wagons this time, but that'll be fine. I kind of look. Uh, I kind of like watching the yellow inserters all working in sync, and that's going to be that for a little while. There's no lane balancer down here. Maybe there should be. Um, we can't really fit one here or here. We could fit one. No, the it has to be three tiles wide at some point. We'd have to put it up here. Okay, fine. Why don't we do our little baby lane balancer? It uses a circuit wire. So all this does is reads um, the corner and then says if we've got less than three items. Uh, assuming that you only have one type of item, the everything signal will work for that. Uh, if we've got less than three items, you can bring that through. I think you'll get slightly less than full throughput, and the less than three is the best setting for it, but obviously we don't need full throughput here. And you can see over here that that's working. Taking equally from both sides. Okay. 
Uh, what else are we waiting on? This one. Back to here, please. And we're down to... Okay, the colors on these wires are the wrong... Uh, these lights are the wrong way away, but it looks like we're down to two or three train loads of iron that we don't want to waste. Um, I don't remember fixing that. Oh, that's right. It was actually not the pipe. It was iron. So that's fine. Why are only two of these active? Oh, fluid. Yeah, yeah, it's guzzling too much water. That's why. Um, just these four could use 800 water per second, and that's not counting all of these. We're only inputting 1,200 per second. So we're very much bottlenecking on water for this build right now. Um, maybe... Let's add some more pipe over here. That doesn't quite reach, that's very disappointing. Is it going to line up very well either? Okay. Uh, this should be red. And red. Blue. And blue. So that is less than two train loads remaining. And then I think I'll just manually pick up the rest of this, since I don't foresee wanting to waste any iron for at least a minute. And away we go. I'm kind of looking forward to replacing the balanced unloaders everywhere, but to actually just replace the ones we've already got, I don't know if I want to bother with that. It's a bit of a pain. And one more to go. We're actually full on copper and stone here as well. So we really need those LDS. Unfortunately, we've currently got... 7.1k. Oh, here we go. Looks like we're going to have enough. Oh, we're actually like full on steel over here. I haven't put a display in the usual place just yet. We could probably fit that pretty easily. And there goes the last of the eye. Not quite. There's literally just 158 left. Okay, you go here please, and then back to depot. And it'll reset its schedule. Um, I think I'll just manually pick up some of this. Do we have the bots here, at least? 
Yeah, 334. That's good. Alright, I have more inventory space for this than I thought. Nice. Alright, let's bring that back home. And then... Uh, we need some rail over here, some signals, uh, there it is, and on this side as well, that's the wrong side, there we go, should go here. I should probably actually use chain signals in the middle there. If the train's going to go straight through, I don't want it to stop. That's something that I should patch with all of these old stations as well. So we just need to connect petroleum and light oil down here. Uh, we need a pickup for plastic. And... And that's it. And one for explosives. Well, we actually sort of mostly built the one for explosives already. So we're going to have an underground go down here. And then... Which would be the best spot? Probably just like this. Should be a relatively convenient spot to bring that through. And we've got all this space left over. Um, I'm really feeling like it's a bit of a shame. Oh wait, no, we need to make a uh, rocket fuel. Yeah, that'll be good. So we could do... Uh, plastic pickup and a rocket fuel pickup on the left side. I think we'll probably do the rocket fuel down here. We could maybe even... Depending on the shape of it, we could put some rocket fuel production over here. But probably we'll do that in this spot. Uh, this will be plastic. This will be rocket fuel. And we'll have to put some kind of limiter. Don't need 200 of these at a time. Um, we'll have to put some kind of limiter so that we're not super prioritizing uh, like sulfur, rocket fuel, whatever. I really need to fix that these two stations as well. Was there anything else I needed to remember back this way? I don't think so. Why did we just destroy iron? I thought I got rid of it all here. Oh, probably... Yeah, the iron was already in these machines. I forgot to pick that up. That's fine, I guess. Alright, so more importantly, the resources are all going to flow now. Um, we're going to keep destroying copper. We're going to make room for the other resources here to get picked up. And we're going to keep getting iron, most importantly. There's actually 9,000 uranium ore here as well, and I haven't set up a module specifically for dealing with that. Um, currently, I could probably make a drop-off for uranium ore right here, and we'll just deal with it down here. 
except that doesn't work because this is completely full. Um, so maybe we'll make a new rail block for uranium next. Might be a good idea. But, uh, alright, let's head over and finish our regular oil block. As the train brings us even more iron. Haven't actually set up a balanced loader here. And then over here as well, that's already done. Um, we do want to connect this. And this one as well. Are we making plastic yet? We need coal. And coal is blocked by the issue with the copper over here. Um, I guess that means our storage for copper is full as well. Yep. And somehow this one's overfilling it also. Uh, seems there is an iron ore train coming to drop off its storage, but that should definitely not be the case yet. There's less than a train load of iron ore at the that particular Omni Smelter station, and most of them have zero. Why would we be... Priority is negative 100. So it absolutely should not be sending iron ore here yet. That seems a bit odd. Just double check this one. Priority is negative a million. Good. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Let's get our offshore pump before we forget. There we go. And how is our... Well, first of all, let's connect this up. That's probably going to be exactly the same. Well, no, it isn't. Light oil went all the way over here. Uh, we need to make sure coal can come down this way first. So there's no room for a pump there if we do it like this. Um, this has to be the coal belt. And that doesn't need to go there. Oh, how much uh, plastic is this? More than 45 per second, right? Yeah, so seven of these. And then plastic on this side. On this side. And then plastic go here. And 
and this is going to be rocket fuel. I don't think we're going to build it down here. Oh, I forgot. Oh, it's a good thing we've got all this space. I completely forgot how different uh, rocket fuel is in space exploration. Let's go pick up some fuel refineries. We're definitely not going to have room for this um, uh, this star design or something like that. But the correct ratio is actually 5 to 1 for fuel refineries making uh, solid fuel. Which we can no longer make in a regular chemical plant. That's the wrong one. I'll let the bots catch up for a moment. Posted screenshot of my core mining to Discord. Let's take a look real quick. That's huge. Oh, it's going straight into the uh, the pulverizers. That works. And then you've got your Vulcanite right over there as well. That's a lot less work for the trains, kind of like we're doing with the um, oil products at the moment. Yeah, nice. I like that. That works. Okay. Uh, did I pick up everything? I think so. Let's go. Refined flammables is on its way to getting finished. I wonder if we've got enough science left. 886, I believe so. Um, I'm blanking on something. Oh yeah, the fuel refineries. I guess we'll probably just do a line of them. Actually, it looks like we could probably fit like that. Alright, so we could also make solid rocket fuel out of vulcanite blocks, but considering we don't get enough vulcanite blocks to turn everything into uh, to smelt all of the iron and copper, Come to think of it, maybe I should configure the Omni Smelters not to use Vulcanite blocks on copper, since we've got too much copper and not enough iron. That is probably a really good idea, actually. Um, all I would have to do is put a constant combinator here to output one uh, of this recipe and that'll pretend like we don't have vulcanite blocks as far as copper is concerned let's do it do it right now um, constant combinator red wire and we're just outputting a recipe copper plate with the vulcanite block. Cut that. Paste. 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 One. Two. Three. That should be it. And then we just have to place them. Maybe be a little bit quicker if I didn't use the bot. Yeah, it would. Let's turn it off. Oops. And that 
that's it. Cool. So we're no, we're no longer using Vulcanite for smelting copper. Hi, quick question. Why do you need Vulcanite blocks to smelt copper, iron, etc.? It adds some benefits. Yes. So, I don't actually have a spare refinery handy. Let's see. Um, what are we smelting over here? Nothing. Steel. Nothing. Copper? Okay, so copper is one to one except for the productivity modules, obviously. One copper ore becomes one copper plate. Uh, with the uh, Vulcanite block version of these recipes, uh, eight iron or copper becomes 12 iron or copper. And when you factor in tier three productivity modules combined with that, I think it's a uh, 40 copper ore becomes 84 copper plate um since you need uh with productivity plus 40 percent you need five recipes to get exactly one or exactly two uh product uh, bonus productions um i, I did r run the experiment i don't remember exactly but i think 40 becomes 84 Additional multiple, like, by modules, yes. Yeah, um, it basically turns, like, one Vulcanite block into four iron, and that's if you're not using productivity modules. Um, once you multiply it out with productivities, it gets kind of crazy. Okay. Thanks, no worries, you're welcome. So this is going to be solid fuel from light oil. Actually, let's check. In vanilla, it's more efficient if you use light oil. Yeah, it's the same thing here. It's only 10 light oil versus 20 or 20. Even when you factor in the cracking, this is just better. So we're going to have... Can we actually do this but also have beacons? I don't think so. Not with just one beacon, anyway. Uh, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Let's turn on our bots again. So if we have a beacon in the middle here, this is actually a lot easier than I was expecting. Um, it is going to be a problem... It might be a problem to insert directly, actually, for only a couple of these. Okay, I really don't like having double rows of long arm inserters, but you could do it this way. I also don't like that we can't fit a substation in here. Um... That would definitely work, but I hate this aesthetically, the two long arm inserters. Let's see what else we can do. I would like to have this little group of um, uh, six fuel refineries, though. Instead of just doing like a row. This is 24 solid fuel per second. But it's only consuming 20. I think that's because of the productivity modules that's changed. I think it's a perfect ratio if you don't use them. Yeah, it is. Okay. So that is 2.4 rocket fuel per second. Uh, 20 to 24. 
uh, let's see. So even with the prods, this is 20 solid fuel per second. And this is just under 5, so the ratio is going to suck a little bit unless we go significantly over it. We could say it's 4 to 1. A Krasus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think I would just rather have the five machines. Actually, if we do four to one, we could probably do a much neater arrangement with the fuel line. Actually, can I do it like this? Oh, that's much better. I like that. Except that wouldn't... That wouldn't work. Ah, uh, so close. I can't put an inserter here and here and also have the pipes work. Hmm, what if this goes down? here, and then that could connect out this way. Actually, that does have to go over there. Well, that kind of works. I don't hate this. Alright, so then I think we will flip this over, and we'll put it somewhere like this. And we can fit three of these pretty easily. Probably fit four of them quite easily as well. Let's do that. And we'll just have to have the belt for explosives come over this way. Try rotate center to get liquid from side. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Oh, and uh, happiness cookie. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I was too caught up answering your question to notice the name for a minute there. I'm okay, just got a cold, so work thought I had COVID when I talked, so had a PCR test yesterday. Uh, that's the rapid ones that are not as reliable, right? No sign of COVID at this point, though. That actually fits pretty well. Me on my free day. Ah, I will do all those tasks that I don't have time for. Me two hours in. Help, no sign of finishing. Rip. Okay, rocket fuel. Um, how fast is this going to be? Uh, ten per sec. No worries. I'll do it over here. And bring this down here or something to that effect. Just full of a cold. Okay, that's good. Let's get another 10 fuel refineries. And I will have to pick that up manually. And then let's check if that's good. The resources are flowing again. There's been a pickup of iron from here. 
And there's some coal. And there's also been iron picked up from here as well. Fantastic. I think we've had four loads of iron picked up from these stations. So that should be a lot more iron getting smelted now-ish. I really want to replace these um, Omni smelters with the new design, but it is going to be a massive pain to move the items that are in some of these chests. I guess I could make a storage for glass and sand and turn these inserters around and make this a pickup station. That'll be a bit of a nuisance though. Okay. And away we go. We also need to actually connect up the light oil, which we have to connect this over here anyway. One thing I don't like with this layout of... Um, substations at the pumps is it doesn't quite reach over here we do need a pump facing this way though all right let's add another substation that's pretty neat actually and we need to get some petroleum as well Wait, is that going to be light oil, or is that going to be petroleum? Does it matter? I could change it. I think I should just do whichever one's going to be neater here. Also, I should fix these signals. Oh, that's the wrong way. There we go. What about this one? Wait, is there actually not room to have the correct signals for this? Left hand drive go this way. So this would have to go here. And this will go here and here. And we can't really have those signals there, but I guess it's fine. Uh, these are chain signals, yes, good. Okay. Yeah, I think just because it's such a neat fit, we'll make this uh, light oil, and this can be petroleum. And we actually need the light oil to get down here as well. So that's going to look something like that. Uh, we also need power to get to the pump. Actually, no, we could... We don't strictly need a pump in that spot. How quickly is this going to use light oil? 720 per second? Um... That's... That's more than this entire row of refineries would be making. If we are also cracking... Uh, that would be... Is it only 216 or was that... Because the power was off. 384 plus 520. Okay. That's maybe fine. Kind of. Or maybe we should just not have... No, I think I would rather have way more production capacity than necessary. And we can enable and disable it under certain conditions. 
All right. So this is going to go down here. And then over here. We'll need some output. On the plus side, that is some really fast rocket fuel production. But maybe we should limit Maybe we should limit the consumption of that light oil until we've got light oil available for other things. Um, I could always just put a pump here. That would be the easiest way. No, it wouldn't. That's a lie. I could put a pump over this way, and then this one will have to be moved a bit. So that could go over there. Okay. So, uh, I kind of want to read the light oil from up here, but, well, if this reaches, sure, why not? So how much light oil do we currently have? We're at 8.1k... Twenty-five thousand times thirty-two is eight hundred thousand. Let's say we have to have greater than half. Or I could have just connected this with a red wire to that one. Well, no, that would connect to the petroleum. That's why I didn't do it. Okay, light oil has to be greater than 400,000. That should make it a low enough priority quite easily. Uh, some balanced loading would be a good idea here as well. Loaders... 24 fast. And then use even distribution. Okay, that that's upsetting that that doesn't quite reach. But the usual circuitry over here would be cluttered up a bit if I put this over here. Eh, that's fine. Just do it like this. I think. This is a... This is a pickup station, though. So it doesn't require anywhere near as much circuitry. Um, we could do this. What is this stat to? 10. So, 40 times 4 times 10 is 1.6k. Um, each divided by 1600. Output yellow, I guess.
don't really like how that inserter is nuzzled in there though. This is probably better. Yeah, that's fine. And then we tell LTN what we've got. And that'll be our rocket fuel pickup. Um, so this is petroleum and rocket fuel. Where is rocket fuel? There it is. I think that was rocket fuel. Yep. Oh. And this one is... Hold on. Oh, so we did make that light oil. Just like before. Alright. Petroleum. There's gonna be room for a pump over here, so let's do that. Can't really see properly. I think I like that a little bit better. Oh. How about this? I think we can move this down a little bit. Perfect. And petroleum starts to accumulate. I think I got the math wrong here because yeah I don't oh what I don't think we have 13 train loads of rocket fuel just yet how much do we have 505 10 times 40 times 4 1600 is one train load each divided by 1.6... Oh, it's receiving a bunch of... That's why. Okay. Rocket fuel. Rocket fuel. And rocket fuel. Okay, cool. That makes more sense. And we can do something similar for... Petroleum. Uh, petroleum divided by, well, normally I would configure it so that one train load is going to be one light, but considering this could only fit two train loads, we'll just ratio it for, how full it is, basically. So, 200,000 over 6 is 333,000. Close enough. I'd like to leave a bit of slack when it comes to fluids. And we'll make that purple, or pink I guess. And disconnects here. And that should be fine. I wonder if this would look a little bit neater though. Maybe. Okay. Let's do a similar display over here. Except it looks messy. This will be lubricant and green. Sulfuric acid and I think yellow. Could it be yellow or red? 
Looks like the fluid itself is actually yellow. So that goes there. And that goes there. That looks a little whoops. That looks a little bit neater, I think. And this is light oil. Uh, I would have thought some of these lights would be switched on. How much light oil do we have? 88k. Divided by... Oh, I think I added a zero. Is it 33,000? Yeah, 33,000. That's actually a lot more accurate than I thought. Okay. That's good. Much better. And we're full of these two. Nice. I like that. Uh, we need a balanced loader for plastic. And it'll probably have to say plastic specifically because it's going to be connected to other things. And we'll do a display as well. I kind of want to put it here just to be consistent. That goes there, that is plastic, and white signal. And then something similar for sulfur, except I've gone and lined up the display in a way that's not going to work on that side. Oops. Let's move all of these up a bit. And... Would it be so bad if I add another sub over here just for one combinator? Maybe. This one would go here. And this goes here. Why do we still have no plastic? Oh, because I never connected the coal. So it's not a train network issue. That's good. Um, I guess a lane balancer wouldn't hurt. We might do something different with this water pipe that wouldn't normally be here. Let's grab our lane balancer first. Like so. And then... This goes here. I feel like that just looks a little bit better. Uh, 
Okay. All right, so that is cool. And let's get rid of this uh, overzealous uh, balanced unloader, shall we? And we'll make a simpler one. I think this should be more than sufficient. Um, I kind of want to remove power until it's done, though. Whoops. Right, so, wait, how much coal do we need maximum? Only 22.5 per second. Let's use fast inserters. And... I think I've got a blueprint for this specifically, actually. Yeah, here we go. Uh, left, 90 per second, combi less. Except it's using stacks, I can change that. And we'll get rid of this part. Um, create a copy, put it in my inventory. Where did it go? Here we go. Get rid of that. And then... Upgrade planner. Stacks back to blue. Perfect. Okay. Why is that not... Oh, okay. It might be slightly off at the moment, but that's fine. I like that. That looks cool. And it's definitely enough items per second. Pretty sure. If it's really necessary, I could make it stack inserters. And here is our plastic. Looks like one side of the belt is getting saturated. 24.8 per second. So it should be just slightly less than... No, it should be more than 45 per second. What's going on? This is 29. 24.8... Oh yeah, it's 22.5 is half a blue belt. Oh, we don't have a balanced... Uh, we don't have a lane balancer here, that's why. Don't have room to do it that way. Um, what if we do this? There we go. Is that not gonna... There we go. Okay. I'm still seeing... I wonder if it's gonna take a moment to correct itself. Wait, is that one not getting... No? This one doesn't have coal, that's why. Okay, cool. Let's just double check that all of them are producing. Yes, good, fantastic. Actually, it would have probably been a better fit. Not quite. We can't quite put the lane balancer there. Unless we put the pump down here somewhere. 
We could do that. I feel like that would be a neater look. So if this goes here... And this goes here. I don't actually mind the way those pumps are next to each other. Okay. I wonder if I should make this yellow just because everything else is, and this is kind of hard to see against the snow. Except I want this to be a blueprint that we can use elsewhere as well. Hmm. Where was the other water? It's over here. Alright, so just here. This underground pipe and these pipes here are what we want to remove from the final blueprint. Uh, Coldy48, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're already full on petroleum, that's kind of a good sign. Uh, so that just leaves... No, we've got rocket fuel. Except it's, um, waiting for more light oil. Once we're half full on light oil, it'll make more rocket fuel. I should probably... Is petroleum a higher priority, or should we just let sulfur... Yep, fully backed up. This is neat content. Is there somewhere I can watch from part one? Uh, sorry, no. I haven't, um... I haven't gotten to uploading all of the VODs to YouTube or something. Probably look into that this week. Is that connected? Yeah, it is. Okay, and let's not forget explosives. Last but not least. I guess we'll do it this way. And then over here. Oh, I forgot to do a display for explosives as well. Can I just steal this a little bit? That'll work. Explosives. And we'll make it red. Make sure it's connected. Get rid of this. And then... Wait, why haven't we been making any explosives yet? Because there's no water. Because we didn't reconnect this part. We can definitely do that pretty easily. Uh, I guess we'll... Where should I put these undergrounds? Eight, six, seven, eight. eight. How about this? But then I would have to have another... I just want to make this look neat and tidy. That's not too bad. Except 
This would have to go here, would have to go here. I can live with that. Alright, so that's going to be explosives. Why is this one not active? No sulfur? And there we go. This one doesn't seem to be doing any. Needs an output. And so does this. Okay. See those long arm inserters working. I know everything else must be. And just to double check, we're definitely not making half a belt of explosives. Which is not to say that we don't want to use both sides of the belt eventually. Do it like this, I think. There we go. I just don't like to see half belts lying around doing nothing. So why is this, uh... Oh, I see. I need to connect this wire. That goes there. And I think... If we're going to be consistent with everything else, this goes down here. Picker dollies is a good mod. I don't love that the light sits behind that train stop, but it's way too consistent with everything else if we keep it that way. Okay. So now that we've got that done, um, we should probably fix those small stations again. Shouldn't take too long because we've done this before. Oh, did something just... Was there a spitter or something? I... I heard something. And then I f thought I fell out of the sky. But I don't see... Oh, I ran out of fuel. Well, that's new. I guess we'll grab some from here. Uh, no jetpack fuel in inventory. I thought it... No, I didn't think. I knew. Oh, why is it putting that in the trash? Well, there we go. My jetpack fuel was auto-trashed, and I couldn't fly. That's cool. What is... Okay. How did we do this before? There's a whole lot of extra stuff. Like, the storage is actually full in this place. So we want to configure it to... Uh, to bring us excess items back. So instead of having a list of items that we absolutely do not bring back to the trash train, um, I think we just want to set some arbitrary limits on how many of these items we keep. We also forgot to connect... Uh, this wire here to tell us what's in the logistic network. So we just kept, um, we just kept, uh, well, let, 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 let me demonstrate it actually. Disconnect this. This combinator right here goes to the LTN train stop and you can see it's requesting like a stack or three of everything. Um, But we forgot to check what we've actually got here, so now we're only requesting ammo. Uh, 
The other thing that we need to do to kind of fix this up is... Uh, bring some excess items back from the logistic network. Um, I think... I think this is supposed to also connect to the logistic network, though. So... Read logistic network contents on this green wire. Connect to here. And also receive a negative of 1000 for any item that should normally be in this uh, system. What is this? Are we having a blackout? Or is it just the wall? I think it's just the wall. Might have to fix this power switch. I think that may have been triggered by bot activity. Yeah, look at them go. Wow. How many bots have we got in flight here? 721 logistic bots. Plus a 100 construction bots for some reason? So, now they're dropping the excess items off into this chest. Um, it won't take from buffer chests. And these are all going to go back to base. We've just got a vanilla train stop here that has trash pickup. Anything greater than zero is active. And it's reading this chest right here. Unfortunately, our trash trains are both trying to go to one pickup in particular. So that should fix this one. Let's head back. And we need to fix the other small train stop. I can't remember what was wrong with this one. So currently we have a train trying to drop off 50 fuel. Oh yeah, that's right. We requested a ton of stuff to get this stuff built quicker, but it was actually way too much. Um, I think we're going to do a similar thing here. We're just going to ask for a reasonable limit for all of these items instead of just banning them from being brought back in the trash. Oop, there it goes. So, one stack for most of these things. Uh, we'll keep the uranium fuel, though. Well, let's maybe limit it to, like, 500. I think that stacks to 100. Okay, that should be fine. So everything else is getting brought back to the trash. And let's check our requests over here. We're requesting more heat pipe. Let's change this to 500. I probably could have just copied those settings from... Oh, I remember this. I ended up deciding to put these signals over on this combinator because I'm not sure why I would want this to be over here. Um, why don't we just make this a stack? And we'll get rid of these two. So 
So currently we're setting it up to have a very strict, precise amount of each resource that we're asking for, but I don't think that's too bad of a thing. Then turn this off for a second. Train size is three. Let's move this stuff over. There's our trash train. Okay, so LTN receives all of these as negatives, which means they are requests. Um, let's limit that one to 50, why not? And receives a positive signal of what we've actually got. Read network contents. Let's connect that to the LTN train stop input. And that should be it. I'm back. I brought beer and kebab tortilla. Help yourselves, chat. <laughs> On the desk left side of the screen. Thank you, Veldak. And it's also snowing outside. Nice. You get snow often where you live? I don't think I've actually ever seen snow in person. Okay, so that should sort itself out. We've got so much stuff that I think a stack inserter is actually appropriate at this point. Snow is the best. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Alright, let's... Uh... They keep picking up just the landfill, the butts are bringing it all back here. Okay, I think instead of trying to ride that train home, we'll just leave. Um, this one seems to be sorting itself out nicely. Although it looks like there might be... Oh, there's a lack of storage space. That'll sort itself out. That's fine. Okay. So that should be all of that sorted out. Let's check how much fuel there is over here. Um, I see zero fuel. So that's that seems bad. In fact, our nuclear plants over there have shut off. And it's just as well we have these ones. Um, perhaps, perhaps we should do something about that. Hasn't snowed here where I'm from yet. But I've never seen a winter without snow. I think that would be like world-ending global warming. Okay, so in about seven years. Snow sucks. Where I used to live, there was usually 25C and 1.5 meters snow during winter. Wow. All you can do is sit inside and wait for spring. Okay. Uh, what are we doing? We need... That's odd. We are requesting uranium fuel cells here. Okay, we're gonna... I think we're just gonna copy everything we just did at the other station. And it should sort itself out. The only thing that's different is the stack inserters. Looks like. This doesn't have to be a filter inserter either. So there should be an LTN delivery coming here pretty soon with um, uranium fuel cells. But I'm not seeing it so far. Oh, and... Well, I was about to say, I think I might have forgotten to change the priority 
but since we just copy pasted everything, we know these two stations are the same. Uh, we do have 2.4 thousand and then some uranium fuel cells. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. Though I do wonder why I haven't seen LTN. Here we go. Fantastic. Wait a minute. 550 fuel? Not that that's bad right now, but... Uh, I messed up. Okay. Um... We need to change some of these wires because this this combinator right here does not need to be linked to the LTM train stop. So if we remove this and this and link this here, that'll do it. And then we need to do the same thing for the other station. Okay, so that green wire is just reading from the logistic network contents, and so is the red wire, and they're not interfering with each other. And the reason we can't link it to this one is... Actually, we probably could have just done that. If we just tick this box right here, that should do it. I thought it was a radio button, I think. Or maybe I just pretty much never used both at the same time because they're going to, like, interfere with each other or something. But in this instance, it's actually perfect. Okay, so is that our fuel? That is our fuel. Nice. And that means we have much more power to spare. And... I almost don't know what to do now. Everything, as far as I know, is fixed and working. Although I don't... Oh, I do know why this train is still here. Um, I feel like... Why... I, I know why this train is stuck here, but I don't know why it came here. Unless we have every single one of these iron ore stations completely full, which we don't, we shouldn't be seeing a train coming to drop off iron ore at the resource sink. I wonder if I forgot to turn on a combinator or something. If that were the case... Is negative a million just too high? Does LTN not recognize that? Maybe. I'm just going to send this train home for now. And we'll set this to, like, negative 10,000. Same thing for this one. I don't think that is the problem, though, because we've had it working before. I just don't understand why... Like, LTN shouldn't be sending iron or copper or stone or coal here, except as a last resort. This is literally just to get rid of resources that are blocking the combined output over here. So... I mean, we've seen, we're, we're seeing LTN deliver over here, so it's not like 
It's not like that's broken. I wonder if it was because the train limit is one on all of these stops. That would be kind of funny. Because we've got enough trains and all of a sudden there was like a a spike in how many iron ore pickup spots were available. Um maybe we ended up trying to deliver iron ore to be destroyed just because there were no other drop-offs for it at the time. It doesn't sound right considering there's like no iron ore sitting in the storage. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Also, I'm tired of this train just sitting here. Why don't we just send it to, back to base? We do have a system in place to drain random resources that come back to the depot. Okay, um, we probably, what do we need here, 16, 16, we might just have enough energy to build the rest of our mining drills. If we start seeing them switch on and off, then we know we've gone a little bit too far, but may as well just build another nuclear plant if that's the case. Although, because of the diminishing returns, um, the more nuclear plants we try to... The more of these drills we place, the less we'll be able to support them on nuclear power from the uranium that they produce. But we can always just get some extra uranium the traditional way. Uh, so where are those drills? There's 20. Let's go drop them off and see how that goes. And then I think we need to build a rail block for dealing with uranium other than the sort of patchwork one that we've already got. Because we've finally got a load of uranium available for pickup. From our um, ore mining. Pretty soon, well not, not that soon, but sooner or later that uranium is actually going to block output. Yeah, 9.8 thousand here. That is not insignificant. Why is that not... Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, that's like 10, that's like 20,000 uranium right there. Where are you trying to go? Oh no. I could have sworn I brought exactly 16 four binding drills. Uh, I'm going to have to go pick one up. I can't just leave that ghost there. Or mining drill. Let's go. And then figure out why our train is not moving. It's got 24 sulfur sitting inside it. 24. How did we configure this one? 57,600, that is the absolute maximum. I guess we'll just drop this a little bit. As much as I hate to do that. It shouldn't really be necessary.
Why are we bringing the... Oh, that was that meteorite that I marked for deconstruction ages ago. Okay. Alright, so what's this? Heat shielding? Why don't we start our uranium processing down here? Gonna need to pick up some more rail to get this done in one go. Have you been to space yet, or are you still on the main planet? I've been to space a few times. Um, but I've kind of not done that much in space. We do have... We're getting to the end of what we can do with rocket science packs. And we've really got control over Nalvis now. There was a lot of having to deal with biters and other problems. But now we've pretty much got it all under control. We can build what we like. Um, something I want to do soon is head up to now uh, head up to Nalvis orbit with honestly like half a cargo rocket full of um, scaffolding and kind of start a new base up here. Not a bad station? Yeah, it's a start. Because I knew that I didn't know anything about the production chains, um, what I've set up up here is just a giant sushi belt. Um, but there's a few things I sort of want to correct with this and kind of start from scratch. Like, for one thing, I didn't realize when I started designing this that uh, it would be filling up with, where is it, uh, with cargo rocket sections, and I don't really want to waste them, so I kind of want to set up a bunch of cargo landing pads for everything that we're going to need in one place, and then uh, at the very least... Maybe we can use a cannon? Let's see. We cannot use a cannon. Well, we could use a, a cargo rocket to send the cargo rocket sections back. Or we could accumulate them, and or we could accumulate them in Nalvis orbit to send launches from here. But yeah, the reusability that recycles some of the cargo rocket sections actually sort of produces its own problems. So, uh, partly as sort of a self-imposed challenge, I like to minimize logistic bots up here. And I want to come up with a design where all of our cargo landing pads are more or less in the exact same spot. And from there we'll see what we do. Excited to see you get there? Yep, we'll uh, get there sooner or later. Uh, currently, currently I need to make... Oh god. Oh no. We're not actually going to end up needing to sink uranium, right? Like actually destroy uranium? No, that's... that's silly. Because we can... well, I don't know, because we're really accumulating the fuel over here. These belts are backed up. But we accumulate it so slowly, we could probably just make more storage stuff. And we're gonna ma keep making more nuclear power. Oh, why is that not fueled? I forgot. There's power management over here. So it waits until... Oh, that's actually really full. Uh, it waits until this steam gets down to... Like, 2.5 thousand in one of these storage tanks. 
before it puts more fuel in. Hey Emma, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so let's grab that rail. And we'll head over and build ourselves a new block. Right about here. What I could do from the moment, I think we're not using one of these storage spaces. Uh, so what I could do right now without even physically going there, because of the way I set this up, is I'll set this to uranium ore, one stack, and I think within a few seconds we should see... Uh, oh, I didn't turn it on. There we go. Within a few seconds we should see a train delivering some uranium ore here. Any second now. LTN. Do we not have many trains in the depots? We have no trains in the depots. That feels a bit strange. Uh, what are you all doing? Iron. Four fragments. Copper plate. Iron. Hmm. Don't have any trains that are stuck. This one is stuck. Oh, I think I remember this one. It's probably been there a long time. Let's go rescue our train. Is there a way to make a train go automatically to a station when it's built? And if so, is this because of a mod? I'm thinking about making a blueprint for a wall that builds itself via robots. You can definitely somewhat uh, set up a station so that it won't be active until everything is, or certain things are built properly, or where are you trying to go again? Down here. Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to set request stack thresholds for these ones. Very important. That's why this train is stuck. Because uh, with the precise loader circuitry that we've got here, we uh, skipped a couple of combinators under the assumption that we're always loading a multiple of four stone bricks. Which normally we would because we'd only be sending a full train. Um, but in this instance, because I forgot that... Uh, Combinator signal. Um, the train was not getting fully loaded, so it wasn't necessarily a multiple of four. The precise loader is important because we need to make sure we don't get inserters sticking out over the track when the train is finished. Um, because we're loading two different types of resource, it's very important not to have an inserter sticking out at the end and then as soon as a cargo wagon comes along it'll put something in it. Alright, let's get started over here, shall we? And just check everything else is working while we're at it. The trash trains have a lot of work to do right now. Oh, even more work because I sent some of those trains home as well. Should probably pick this stuff up. That's actually in the robot network, so I don't have to go and do that myself. Um, I might get rid of this stuff as well. How much stuff is in here? A little bit too much. I don't want to create too many bot jobs all at once. Uh, 
Um, and yeah, you can absolutely make a blueprint for a wall that builds itself via robots. Um, this wall that we've got over here does exactly that. Um, it gets all the items and bots delivered. Um, the bots get put directly into the robot network. And as long as you've got the blueprint, it'll extend itself out. Uh, one thing you can do that I haven't tried yet, but um, I think is probably a really good idea, based on my own experience, is set it up so that instead of one big robot network, you've got a bunch of little ones that are connected to each other and have some inserters and chests exchanging items between each network. That way your bots won't be traveling a really long distance and you won't have to go out of your way to, for example, separate these two robo networks down here so that you don't get bots traveling or trying to travel all the way across here. Yeah, the separate network was my idea as well. Oh yeah, there you go. That's what I'm planning on doing with the base I just started. Cool. All right, has that been most of our rail? Yes, good. I think I posted a blueprint like that earlier in Discord. Check it out for inspiration. Yeah, I thought it was, uh, well, I mean, it was a while ago, but I thought Veldak or someone posted something like that. Okay, um, that should, is that coal? Is that 735 plus 85 coal? How odd. Um, three is in the way. Fine. I can't just, I can't just leave this call here. There we go. Slight cod. Ash on delivery. Plenty of things to solve. It was fun. OCD. Yes, indeed. Yeah, definitely garden variety OCD. I probably picked up more coal than all of that just now. 166 coal. And this is what? 726. It's a little bit more. Okay. First things first. This will be our drop-off. I wonder if I could just use like half of a block for this. Because it's not going to be that much. What's your name on Discord? Oh, to Veldak. Okay, uh... I should really make a template for this so I don't have to keep stealing it from... other stations. Uh, we are going to need sulfuric acid, actually. No, wait, that's for mining, not for processing. Yeah, we literally just need uranium and electricity, right? 
Okay then. Um, rip trees, I guess. And I need some uh, centrifuges. Oh, we've got the module Mark IVs. They are a bit complicated to build, though. The only one we could do is Speed 4. Which would be a bit of a pain, though. We need to go into space. Well, actually, I wonder if... Is it this one? Machine learning data. We've got that on our sushi belt, right? Nope, we've got none of it. We're missing blank data card. Okay, yeah, we've run out of... We've run out of stuff for the space science. But once we get that going for a little while again, um, we could set something up to make speed module 4s up there. Wait, no we couldn't. Uh, it's productivities that we could do. All we need is vulcanite blocks and machine learning data. How much do we get out of prod 4? Plus 10% productivity as opposed to plus 8. It's not really worth the effort just yet. Alright, um... I think I think we'll do a basic balanced unloader, maybe combinator list. Well, let's let's figure out how fast this is going to be first. Let's go get those um, how you say centrifuges. How about 200 for now? How fast is one of these with two prod threes in it? Uh, very slow. Less, th a bit more than one every 20 seconds. It uses only 0.5 uranium per second, but we're going to give it speed modules. Um, I mean, a beacon, that is. Speed modules give us... This has three prod modules, but just to get a ballpark, crafting speed is plus 100%. So it's going to be a little bit more than two times crafting speed. Still pretty slow. Where are our centrifuges? Did we not make very many of them? Uh, where are we making centrifuges? Oh, here we go. Yeah, we've only got a few. What did we limit this to? Only 20? That won't do. It starts with Welkazek. Is there a mod yet where you can pre-configure logistics trash? Pre-configure? Oh, like save all of this between different games? I hope so. I never actually it never actually occurred to me to look for one. Um I really wish there was this for Spidertrons as well. Yeah. Cause it takes a lot of clicks to set up a nice organized uh personal logistics and auto trash system. Oh I didn't need that much rail right now. Oh I okay. Let's just drop off some of it. That's fine. And then... I guess we'll head over with our 36 centrifuges. It'll be enough to get started designing this stuff. 
So we're going to want uh, speed centrifuge uh, productivities not like that and start with uranium processing how many can it's going to be eight isn't it And this is going to have to look like this. It's pretty going to, it's going to be pretty straightforward, this build, right? Like, really straightforward, actually. Let's get some power so we know how much it's going to take. This is actually still really slow. Uh, 14... 0.67 uranium ore per second. I wonder... That's still way more than we're expecting from our core mining. We're expecting less than one per second, infinitely. Um, on the other hand, we can always go get some more. We do still have this 616,000 that we've already got a mine set up for. Although we haven't got a rail pickup for it just yet. There's also some more uranium mines where we've already... Here it is. Where we've already taken the territory. So why don't we just... Um, why don't we just make way more of this than we need? And the minimum consumption is not that much, considering we're using nuclear power. I think Though, I think we will do all of the processing in one location. So we're going to want uranium ore, um, iron plate. Actually, this is already iron plate. Maybe we should leave that where it is. Why is there a coal train coming? Um... What is going on? Request stack threshold. Oh, there it is. That's why. Uh, rip. Okay, where is this coal train? Is this it? Nope. What about this one? Nope. Must be the middle one. Uh. No? It has to be one of these. Oh, oh, oh. Is this it? I was looking at the wrong thing. I think it's this one. Yep. Okay. Um, how about... Instead of coming here... You go over here... And deliver coal to our oil system. Crisis averted. It's not full, right? Why is... Why is that a negative? Oh, I see. Oh, uh, I need to change that circuitry. It's probably functional, but the display is going to be wrong. Alright, that's cool. 2.4... I think the chests are full at this point, though. That was actually really close. So once that train goes home, this yellow light should disappear. Okay, 
So we're also requesting iron here already. I don't know if I want to change that though. So we get our iron delivered here. We get uranium delivered over here. And do some uranium processing. We'll use like the first half for that, I think. And substations. That's not going to work. Let me just start with this. Actually, no. Okay. I can't quite make the substations line up very well here. Oh, we can do them in the middle, of course. Okay. That's a really good fit, actually. And so is that. That's actually perfect. Okay, cool. So what's our rate so far? 44 per second. Maybe we should just stop there. Let's let's double it. Why not? Wait, what's the output going to look like? Way less than that? Yeah. So what if we double the length of this? Hello and plus one underground belt, please. Okay. In us rage, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Ah, oh, yes, there it is. Thank you. Doop -ba -doop. Um, I guess this is going to look more consistent since we're doing so many undergrounds like this. Okay. And this one. Uh, let's find the middle. Actually, I should have, like, measured that first. Is this it? This is definitely the middle. Okay, I can't move, though. Do balanced unloader here with no combinators. And then probably move this up here actually. That's shouldn't be a problem at all. So this goes here, and this goes that's not quite symmetric, this will do, I've run out of power, oops, Okay, so that should be, well, we'll be able to tell once we get the bots back in action. Let me just turn off my RoboPort for a sec, because a lot of this we can do much faster than the bots can. Get them to do the more finicky business. 
they're recharging anyway. Alright, that should do it. We need more centrifuges. How many have we got back at base already? We have eight. That is fewer than I was hoping for. How about we upgrade this inserter right here? Since we are extremely bottlenecked on that. And there goes the concrete. How many more of these do we need? Uh, it's a total of 48. It's hard to tell how many of these are ghosts. Why don't we just delete this for a second? And it looks like these are all real. I guess. Must be, because the bots aren't doing anything. There's at least one RoboPort that's not out of energy. Okay, so our rate for half of this is 44 per second. Just a little bit less than a blue belt. Fantastic. Looks like we've actually got most of these already. We need like 10 more, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're already at 11. So probably by the time we get there, we've got enough centrifuges for this row at least. Um, but we may as well wait and design things while we wait. Let's do a Filtered output. Um, going to need to get uranium-235 off this belt. Actually, it might make more sense to go the other way. Let's do the easy cover -X system, shall we? Yeah, if I go down this rabbit hole again of trying to make another really clever and cool uh, cover -X system, we might just be here all day. Although, I don't remember necessarily setting up... Oh, here we go. Okay, we need a lot more fast inserters. Do we have the iron here yet? Not even close. Probably because I didn't connect this up here. And that goes there. We don't actually need a fluid delivered here. That should be fine. Is that a rock or a cliff? It almost looks like a cliff. Okay, let's configure this for uranium. We don't need that circuit. Green, and then um, 
let's say 55k. And then set this for uranium. These don't need any more attention. And then we need to... I think we do actually need the combinator that's just like a one-way piece of wire for this. Unless... If this was red wire and we connect it to here, then it wouldn't get this stuff as contamination. Oh, there's actually no signals that need to be fed to this for the balanced unloading, which is kind of neat. So if this just goes here, is that actually a problem? It was a prop. What are you doing? No. Um, it was a problem up here because... Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go fix that. Oh, we're, we're not using a, the old style balanced unload here. Okay, can I fix this remotely? We need to not connect that directly to there. Now the display works. And now LTN is just going to ask for 55,000 coal unconditionally. Even though we're pretty full already. I think we do need the uh, the one by the one way piece of wire for this. There might be a way to do this with different wire colors. Yeah, red wire touching all of this and going straight to LTN. Or if this right here was a red wire, and then this goes directly to LTN, that would work. That would... That would be all it takes. Uh, let's disconnect this for now. And this goes red wire. And... Good thing that's an oil train. And then the green wire tells us what we've got. That should be that. We can do the exact same thing over here. So... Wait, what is this? Oh, I see. Yeah, no, that makes a stupid kind of sense. Alright, that goes there, and that goes there. So the negative water comes from here, the... How? What? Oh. Oh, this is each. Okay. Uh, water... Divided by 25k. That shouldn't be 25k. It should be... Um, uh, 30... Whoops. 33,000. Water divided by... 33,000. That will tell us how much water we've got, which is none. And this is iron divided by 16k. We need a specific signal here because we're mixing resources. What do you think you're doing? I must have sent it a positive amount without this negative amount right here. So, be gone. That should be that. I think that train was already on the way, actually. What project are you working on now? Terex. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, currently doing uranium, but uh, got a little sidetracked having to fix a little problem, as is often the case. 
So this one is coming to give us oil. Fantastic. Cleaner for you. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, Malcolm. Hope you're doing well. I wonder if it would not be too excessive to have another line of these. Uh, Heinch, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Let's go pick up significantly more fast inserters. Hello there, love your voice. I can work with your stream so well, thanks. Welcome, and thank you. Okay. We also need to remember to get centrifuges. Here they come. And yeah, we've got all this space here. I want to use most of it. Oh, I forgot to put beacons in this build. So that's going to be interesting. So our simple coverick system uh, puts uranium-238 in these chests. Uh, doesn't pass it down unless there's at least a hundred in this chest here. So it's sort of a lazy, not exactly balanced loader, but it makes sure there's enough for each machine, unless we're running out. Um, probably should have stopped the bots from building all that because we need to figure out how we're going to fit beacons for this. So, obviously you've got your 238 going round and round in circles. On this side you've got your 235 going round and round in circles. This one here picks up first, and it outputs over here. And then one tile later, the same thing happens here. Uh, we read belt contents hold at this piece of belt. And then we only pass to the next couple of machines if there's eight uranium-235 here. Uh, Nekono Kumura, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So we need to squeeze a beacon in the middle of four of these if we can. And I think we can. Maybe not. Let's, um, let's just assume that we can keep basically the same configuration of inserters in the middle. That's, in, that's going to be only three. Maybe if we make it wider, we'll be able to squeeze them in as close together as possible horizontally because I'm positive we can't do it in three blocks like that. Um, if we do it that way, the whole chest arrangement up here is going to have to change as well. So, what we want to do... I could... Well, no, we were already doing that. So we can have these pretty far apart. This shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, filtered outserter through here. Um, I think it is actually worth using stack inserters for this. And then... We'll do a... Read belt contents hold. Uh, the first one is going to have to be... Greater than or equal to 4. Uranium-235, because it's only going to be half the belt, or it may be only half the belt, and then we want it to come over here to do the same thing. Um, I'm flipping this all wrong. Let's just figure this out. I 
could... I could have it go... All the way down this way, and then come back, and then come back this way. So, that just goes like that, goes like that. And then it's going to do the exact same thing over here. That could work. In fact, I'm sure it will. Although, it's all going to be on the one side of the belt. Not that that's really a problem. But... If at all possible, I would like to make it a bit more compact and clever. I don't know if we can move this over here. I think we can. No, that's going to cause problems when this one wants to output and this isn't backed up. It's going to keep this one from doing its thing. Okay, what if we do sort of a... We, we've got one design that will work, but I don't want it all to go the same way. Just because it might look cool. So that's going to go there. Maybe no, we can't have it encroaching on space for the next one. If this is going to repeat over and over, it's going to bump into the beacon. It's not like we can have it turn and then do an underground. I think we might end up going for just that repeating pattern, like so. I mean, it will work. We could just leave these set to Oh, that has to be greater than 4. Or greater than or equal to 4. Um, greater than or equal... And I don't really care to force it to... wait for the whole thing to be saturated at the end, as long as the machine... Like, if there's four uranium here, then the machine should be... No, I think... I think on the second side of the belt, we will have to set it up to be asking for eight. But that's okay. So, substation goes here. And then repeat. And lines up very nicely with what we've already got. Now, how are we going to deal with the Uranium-235? We need to input and output. How much does it take? Only five. Definitely don't need stack inserters for this one. Hmm. I'm honestly not sure how to do this. I would love to do it with just a belt somehow, but I don't think... We, we typically need a lot of storage for the Uranium-235, especially, especially if you're just getting started. You're going to end up with way more Uranium-235 than 
other resources. Uh, the 238, that is. Wait, I said that backward. You're going to end up with way more 238 than 235. So I like to be able to have a single storage chest for every single machine, which makes it a lot easier to sort of check, have we got enough for this one before moving on? But, well, what if we, I don't like having to do it this way. We could do it like this, even though it's going to be like every other machine gets two um, chests. I think a uh, steel chest may be a little bit excessive for this, but it's honestly more trouble at this point to go back and get wooden chests. So... That won't work. It'll work for every other machine where we can do this. Okay, we're going to have to go wider, I think. We'll see if we end up having to move all of this down a tile or two. I use a mod called Merge Chest, where you can make one big chest. Nice. Actually, now that I think of it, we do have something we could use for that. Except, there's no way to check what's inside it. Um, I think it's called Cargo... Here it is, Cargo Pod. You can actually put this down on the ground as a 2x2 container. However, you can't connect circuit wire to it. You can't tell what's in it. Or a very long one? Yeah. Yeah, having just, like, one incredibly long chest for, uh, on the outside of this for all of the 238 would make things very easy. Um, I do want to see if I can figure this out. So I'll figure it out over here to start with. And it has to fit within three tiles every time. It's times like this that I really wish for inserters that could go both ways at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but be configured for both at the same time. So what if we do this? And then... Oh, I think I might have figured it out. Is it going to look like that? Is that it? And then we have a belt over here. I kind of wish for a filtered long arm inserter sometimes, but on the other hand, it's really important to make sure there's enough space to output the 23, uh, 238, so I don't really mind having all of this extra storage space here. What I do mind is I am going to have to move all of this down exactly one tile. And it's going to be a lot of work for the bots. Well, the sooner we start, the sooner we finish. Output to chest, then output up to belt, and use long hands for input. Output to chest, then belt, then use long hands for input. It would still take the same clearance, right? So we're not wasting any effort moving this stuff. Put to chest, then to belt, then use long arm for input. That could work. Um, and 
then... Yeah, that's a lot cleaner. There's no way to, like... No, there isn't. It does have to be this tall, I'm pretty sure. Need a bit of circuit wire here, same. How much does it take? Only five, that's perfect. Okay, so we're gonna say uranium 238 has to be equal to eight. This this part has to be full before we send any more uranium down the line. And then like so. Make a blueprint, snap to grid relative, get on the map, hold shift, click and drag. And then I think this is the same. Yep. Cool. Basically what you have now, stuff getting destroyed, bunch of splitters and set input priority for the output of the centrifuge for a belt solution. Is that gonna, that's probably gonna take up more space and have a million splitters, right? Oh no, the substation. No, it just barely doesn't reach. Oh, the tragedy. Well, could we perhaps do an alternating thing like this so that we can fit substations and also do this? Yeah, I like that. Let's get rid of all of this and get rid of all of this. Bonk. A million splitters, but one tile less space. It's just riding the same. Also, Sapolsniak, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I was more reading your comments than noticing the name. Heinche, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'll put pictures then. Yes. Okay. And, uh, I am sir. Did I say hello earlier? I think you just got here. Oh no, you were there. Yeah, y you were here early. Okay, my god. Alright, so make sure we remove this belt before pasting this new stuff over it. Um, we can get rid of these substations. Blueprint this, snap to grid relative, line it up, and go. And go. And then the minimum of substations. Two, three, four, five. Let's just check the Ys, place this as needed. Oh, is that a multiple of five as well? No, it's not. Why did I think it was? Hold up. We can fit exactly... Oh, it's six. Okay, cool. So four substations and six uh, beacons, and it lines up perfectly. Ratios go burr. Yes, sir, I was early. Yes, indeed. You can keep stock on several different types of items in one chest via an inserter. Yes, 
we don't need to do that here, but I can absolutely show you how to do that. So up to five items because filters, we go blacklist, we set filters and we feed this thing items. One, two, uh, three. What else have we got? Four, five, and if we feed it some other, depending on the order of signals, um, looks like this is going to pick up infinite combinators because we can't fit more filters. So up to five items, um, it's only going to pick up one of each type of item. However, if we add a constant combinator, the way filters work, uh, when you set filters or set requests, a positive signal is counted, a zero or a negative is not. So if we feed this thing, how many is that? Five? One, two, let let's, let, let's not feed it all of those. Let's say we can pick up three additional fast inserters. And the moment, oh, the moment I click the button here, there we go. I think it put in one more because stack size was not set to one. So let's try that again. So negative three means we can pick up three more fast inserters than usual. So we've got four. It was for your own thing. No worries. Yeah, I've got a couple of uh, examples of that in this blueprint book called Loaders. Um, I put that on the Discord and the website recently. Uh, so if you if you look in this blueprint book called uh, Loaders and go to Shared Chest, there's an example of that. Um, with iron and copper. And there's also an example uh, how to load a furnace. So here, did I just run out of filter inserters? Uh, here we have negative four iron plate, negative one stone, and just because that's the maximum stack size, uh, 11 copper, 11 iron. So this will go to 12, 12, two, and five. And then the stack filter inserter rather than being set to set filters blacklist, we're on set filters whitelist. So once we get to the maximum for whatever resource it is, um, the stack filter inserter will be allowed to put it into the furnace. Thank you. You're welcome. Always happy to help with this sort of thing. Um, I think I'm going to put some more time into building up more of these things like the those two blueprint books I just made and it's going to be the basis for um, uh, the tutorial series eventually but it's it's a bigger job than it might sound like trying to figure out exactly what the tutorial series is going to look like because oh this doesn't need to here. Wait, how many are we going to get out of this? Nowhere near a full belt, right? Yeah, that's fine. 8.86 per second. How many would this use? Only 1.76 per second. Okay, then. Uh, yeah, because it's not enough to just kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, I need to get an idea of, like, the totality uh, and get a better idea of like all the possible things I might start with for 
starting from scratch to show someone how to use a circuit network. So I'm going to be putting some more time into building blueprint books like this. Um, and the same for the balanced loaders here. Um, and maybe do some written tutorials. And I think at some point I'll just hit the point where I've done enough of those. It's like, right, let's put some of these into videos. Okay, I think this one is actually pretty much done. Um, I think we're at the point where we need to test it. Also, why doesn't that reach? That makes me sad. How about this? That's symmetrical enough. And this one is going to go over here. Is that okay on the corner? Let's not even wonder. There is one thing I want to change over here, which is we want all of these on the southern side to wait for both sides of the belt to be saturated. I'd love some written tutorials, not that I need tutorials for my gameplay, but I like reading them, no worries. That might be something I can actually work on in my several seconds at a time of downtime from work as well. It's not so much several seconds at a time so much as uh, really unreliable the gaps that I get there. So not very good for trying to make or edit videos, that's for sure. Okay, um, so this is going to be iron. We need iron for uranium fuel cells. And we actually need a lot of uranium-238 for that as well. Um, should we do another perfectly lined up row for uranium fuel cells. I feel like that's going to be super overkill, but I don't care. Let's go get some more centrifuges. Oh, it's actually just about time to finish as well. Wait till you see what I posted to Discord. I had to cut it to several posts because Discord said reaching character limit. Uh-oh. What have we got? Nope. Blueprints? Oh, nice. That's the wall, isn't it? Yeah, that looks cool. I kind of like it on the map with the one tile missing between each uh, robo network. Alright, cool. So many new people in the Discord, too. Welcome, welcome. Too early to finish? Well, I got work. I, I've got a morning shift for work tomorrow, so if I don't finish now, I will probably die. Um, so I'll have to continue this tomorrow. IMO, if you want to make the best of both worlds for written video tutorials, you just make short videos with text on the screen while showing the details on screen in game. Yes, indeed. Time? Time. Alright, let's see who else is uh, streaming Factorio today. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess Mucky is. Yes, indeed. Is there anyone else we want to drop in on for a change? Um... Not really seeing anyone except for some random people. 
I might give some random new person a go tomorrow. But today, let's drop in a monkey. Thanks for the stream, have a good weekend. Thanks for hanging out. See you tomorrow, if you so desire. And it will be uh, the usual time tomorrow, a uh, long stream, unless I'm melting in the heat or something, and maybe start a little bit later. Can I have a link to the Discord? Thank you, Nicknock. Uh, Tin and Fan, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's all drop in on Mucky, shall we? Bye-bye. Right, we'll deal with it. That's what we got fast spots for. <laughs>